uh, rather, we are going to review the different research papers, as, as we mentioned before, research papers that are written and are related to ethical theory and practice. Okay lang po ba yun? Para hindi masyadong technical. Because while browsing the contents of the ethical theories, it's mga subtopics, mga morality, approaches to the study of morality, relativism, egoism, utilitarian, utilitarian theories, Kantian ethics, common morality theories, rights theories, virtue ethics, feminist theories and ethics of care, etc., etc. So my, my plan, of course, is to give a glimpse of all the theories that were mentioned, but we will not be focusing on the technical aspect of those theories. Instead, we will just, we will be applying, no? And uh, we will try to connect those theories in the current setup that we are um, we are we are doing right now. If we are in the academe, either basic education or higher education, I'd like us I'd like us to have a clarity. I'd like us to have a a an application of these theories in the current practice. Okay, lang po ba yon? Pwede po bang pa-thumbs up sa mga nagsasabi na okay lang yung ating... Yes po, Doc. Yes, po. Yes, yes. Ayoko maging very technical kasi pang ano to eh. Mga pang philosophy eh. No? Ito ba yung major subject ninyo or uh, elective? Elective. Po. Elective, Doc. Elective. Nako, o di sige na nga kung elective siya niya. <laughs> Oo, pero... Oo. Sige. So, since yan elective ninyo <laughs> at yan sa curriculum, no choice naman ako. Yun ang binigay sa aking subject. So, hindi ko pwedeng kontrahin yun. Pero, uh, I will just make some modifications. Instead of discussing the technicality of the different theories, we will try to, to connect these theories to the current practice. But before we begin, I have here a question that you need to answer. All the participants today, you need to answer my basic question about uh, when can you say that an act is ethical in nature? So by, by answering that, you need to go to www.menti.com and use the code 4334-3579. You can answer three or more um, ideas, a word or phrase um, that you think um, your, 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 your idea about um, ethical conduct or ethical act. Or when can you say that an act is ethical in nature? See, so. Go to www.menti.com and use the code 4334-3579 and I'll be waiting for your answer. Malalaman ko na sumasagot na kayo kasi maglalabas ng answer dito sa aking screen. link ng alin kasi this is ano uh, all you need to do is to open the ano is to open your browser you type www.menti.com you will be asked to enter the code and then after entering the code um, uh, that's the perfect time for you to provide your answer Hi, Doc. What's the code po again, sir? Sorry po.
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what was that? So uh, I am receiving five, I'm receiving answers from the five uh, students. Kita nyo ba yung right side kung ilan tao yung sumasagot? Ayan, seven. Ayan, meron na. Seven out of, ayan, nine na. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you for responding. Thank you for responding. I have I have nine students who are now able who were able to answer the question. So if I have 16, siguro ano pa? Uh, nine. 16. So seven pa. Ayan, six na lang. Yeah. All right. 12 and four more. Four more participants to answer my question about when can you say that an act or any act is ethical in nature? Four more, yung apat na hindi pa sumasagot. Meron akong listahan dito ng mga sumagot na. <laughs> Ito na yung magiging part participation nyo. Kasi uh, nakaregister ako sa menti.com, nakasubscribe ako dito, kaya nakikita ko kung sino yung mga sumagot at saka mga hindi pa sumasagot. But of course, I will not mention yung mga hindi sumagot. But to me, that will be my basis of your participation. Kasi, uh, ano yan eh, uh, para meron akong ano, pandagdag points, may plus one. <laughs> Pag sumagot, may plus one. So sabi ko nga, kung, one, kung flat one ang grade nyo, so plus one magiging dos. <laughs> Alright, I'm happy. There are 14 already, 14 respondents. So out of 16, I got 14 respondents. So mortality is two. <laughs> So, pwede na. 14 out of 16. Majority na yon. So, ayan. 15. Sige na nga. Perfect ko na nga. Dapat mag 100% na. O, isa na lang. Kung sino, man, kung sino man yung isa pang hindi pa nakasagot, o baka mahina internet, of course, I would understand that. Sige. Baka uh, nahihirapan sa internet. Kaya hindi, ano, hindi makasagot. Alright. Okay. So, let me start. Um, Yon, perfect. Ayan, pwede nang picturean. Pwede na kayong magpicture ng ating uh, first slide, your first active participation in our class. Thank you. And I'm happy that aside from I have um, brilliant students and intelligent students, I have techy, I have technologically uh, skillful students. Imagine it mo oh, ang gagaling yung magano sumagot sa menti. So you will notice that from this um, application, usually the, 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 the bigger the font size, meaning mas marami ang sumagot doon. So majority of you uh, were able to answer that um, an act is ethical when it is morally upright. No? But of course, uh, later on, we will have a further discussion about how do we know if an act is morally upright? No, because there is such a thing as norm. And sometimes the norm will dictate you of whether you are morally upright or not. And we have also to understand that we have several standards that we are following for us to be morally upright. The standard of the law, no, meron tayo statutory law. The, stand, the divine law, <laughs> syempre, kaya may Bible <laughs> that dictates morality. And of course, uh, the standard of our society. Kasi minsan, uh, we have our society that uh, would have their own standards. That's why sometimes <clears throat> you become immoral 
although your act is, is a moral act, you become immoral if majority says that uh, you are immoral. So it's still the, 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 the morality being upright may, may depend also on the society, on the people around us, on the environment. And if you go further, if you would like to validate that, sometimes we, you know, we consult a legal basis or lawyer, no? Because uh, for us to say that we are upright, then it must be in accord with the law, no? And siempre, who knows na we may be judged morally upright, but in the eyes of the, of the Lord, of our, of our God, it is not right. Kaya may divine law. No? Kaya di ba meron sinasabi palagi na the, 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 our God is our final judge. Sa, sa, sa Christian saying, sa Roman Catholic saying, um, we believe that the Lord is the final judge. What about in Islam? Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, since we, are, we have here another religion, to be fair, paano, paano nyo sinasabi ang moral, morally upright sa Islam? There is, okay, uh, there's only one way to find out if something is ethical or not, and that would be what the Holy Quran says. And uh, for, for the way we should worship, it's based on what Prophet Muhammad uh, has described everything for us. Mm -hmm. But but the, the 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 main source is the the law of uh, Quran. The in, law. in Saudi Arabia, they call it the Shari Sharia law. Sharia law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is some sort of. Uh, some sort of uh, very conservative and very old way of of uh, measuring what what right and what is wrong. All right, all right. Which is subject to interpretation of the scholars. Yeah, yeah. So you have scholars that um, are responsible in interpreting whether you are ethical or unethical. Uh, mostly the interpretation is based on how, how say, two, two women committed adultery, but un under two different circumstances. All right. So the question now is, how would woman A would be punished? Would it be by beheading? Mm -hmm. And how would woman B would be punished? Would it be by stoning her to death? Oh, for public uh, uh, humiliation, something like that. Actually, that that is in the Bible, right? There was it is. Uh, it is. Yeah, yeah. There was a time in the history written in the Bible that that part of the punishment is beheading or or uh, the stone. No, no. Yeah, stoning. Stoning. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, but. Uh, although we have different uh, perspectives and practices here, I think uh, that would uh, make our subject unique. No, uh, you, you, we are united despite of our diversity. No, so the, the, we, we, are, we are learning from one another. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Jojo. Are you raising your hand? <coughs> please? Yes. Yes, po, Doc. Good morning. I just want to share. Bago mag off yung phone, kasi nangihila na yung battery. Sige, sige. Um, Participate ka na bago ka mawala. <laughs> <laughs> opo, sir. Opo. Uh, since I also experienced teaching in a Muslim country, which is in Brunei, um, I think I have the audacity to share what is moral and immoral when it comes to Muslim practices and Christian practices. And okay. one example of one example of, of that, sir, is um. Halimbawa po, ako ay Christian and then um, ako po, I am not allowed to 
uh, yung magsabit ng crew sa kotse kasi for them, that's immoral. That's bordering disrespectful sa kanilang religion. So ako, yung sasakyan ko dati, as in walang makikita na ako ay Christian. Not because I don't like to show that I am Christian, but because according to them, that is immoral and that is being disrespectful. Another thing is that women and men, kagaya po na sila ang binisaray, ang mag-girlfriend o mag-boyfriend, mag-asawa, kahit mag-asawa na at kasal, it's not moral, uh, it's not moral for them to see na naglalambingan or nagsishow ng endearment. Kasi for them, it's immoral. About so, ano, public display of affection. Yes po sir. It's, it's, for them, it's immoral. So, hmm. mag-asawa kayo, you have to show that you are just simple human beings. Walang PDA, walang public display of affection. Something like that, sir. Another one is um, mentioning si the Mar- word. Si Mama March ay madalas mag-display ng public display of affection. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not though. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> it's against our Catholic teaching. In Dela Salipa, it's a no-no. <laughs> Sige. Please, sorry to disrupt you. Uh, okay lang po, sir. Um, another one is yung um, pagsusuot po ng mga damit na major revealing. Of course, for us, it's it's just normal. Pero for them, uh, Muslim, especially my Muslim uh, students before, para sa kanila yun po ay immoral. Kasi po sila, sila ay balot na balot. Mm-hmm. From mula ulo hanggang paa, kasi sila ay balot na balot. Kaya pag sila ay nakakakita ng Christians na nakashort, na maiikli, bawal. They, bawal po yun. Parang para sa kanila, immoral yun. Parang minsan niya to the point na pinagtatawa na lang nila, something like um, napaka-disrespectful, Disrec- disrespectful sa kanilang religion at according to them, disrespectful sa katawan nung nagsusuot ng mga may ikling shorts. So, yun po yung um, ibang halimbawa ng moral at immoral para sa kanila. So ako, while I was there teaching, medyo behave po ako. Not because hindi ako nagpo-follow or um, disrespectful ako, but I have to know my grounds. I had to know my grounds. Alam ko yung dapat kong gawin. Alam ko yung dapat kong sabihin. Kasi ayoko naman maka-offend sa, sa religions or cultures po nila. Yun lang po, sir. Maraming salamat. That's right. Thank you for that sharing, no? And that wearing of short shorts, even in the Philippines, I uh, meron pa rin mga uh, conservative, no? And um, Especially in, in, in Catholic schools, talagang bawal yan, no? Can I say something um, regarding what Jojo just yes, added? Yes, sir. You may, you may share something. You, you yeah, can. Uh, I, I completely agree with Jojo uh, that these are things that are not allowed in the Islamic religion. But everything that Jojo mentioned are just outward manifestations of of uh, following or adhering to what the Muslim culture wants us to to follow, especially if you are not a non-Muslim. But what I learned, what I learned from Islam, which I find very beautiful, is that um, at the end of the day, when you close your door, it is always between you and your God. It, it applies to all uh, because I, I became Muslim when I was 40, 45 years old, not, not long ago. So I, I had so much to catch up from, from, from start to finish. It took me it took me two months to memorize the basic prayers because I am not good in Arabic. I'm an English teacher and I seldom use Arabic. Um, so it, it took me it took me two months really to memorize. When when the younger Filipino new Muslims would be able to to memorize these prayers in 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 no time. But yeah, I I I was taught that 
using the left hand when eating is is impolite uh that yeah you, you should not be uh you should not have any tattoos and having tattoos is in an outward disobedience towards allah but i i, I was able to learn much more valuable lessons in life in islam and one of these what i have told you that at the end of the day when you close your door it is you and allah it is something between you and your god so if you do something crazy if you do something nasty you're, you're not a man of you're not going to answer to anyone else but to god and i think it applies to to catholic faith because i was catholic once and i also taught in de la salle tertiary school it was called ter tertiary school before um and 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 that's it uh, there's not much any difference between islam and christianity actually uh muslims are allowed to marry christians uh but hindus no and, and Buddhists no, uh, but the, the 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 closest religion to Islam is Christianity because there's so much similarity between Islam and uh, the Bible and the Quran. Even the prophets are the same. We we just have different names for the prophets. Like uh, uh, Moses is called Musa, something like that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I think um, if you know Robin Padilla, I think he changed his um, uh, religious affiliation from Catholic to Muslim, right? Yeah, but but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about his his intentions of being Muslim. <laughs> but uh, if but there is a teaching: if someone claims that he is Muslim, it is his right right this okay. is right to claim that he is and no one is allowed to judge um if he's bad muslim or good muslim uh we are not up to to that point we are not allowed to but i'm not so happy to see what he's doing it's it's our, it's actually our privilege being in, in a democratic country like the philippines it is our uh right and privilege to to select whatever religious affiliations you would like to uh, no, to, to take no yes. that's why uh religion is uh, to me is not an issue to be to be debated about and um what, what is more important is your itong itong pinakamalaking word na nakita ko dito I'm very happy for as long as more we are morally upright whatever your religious affiliation is for as long as we are morally upright and for as long as that that term or phrase is in accord with um, with our respective uh, Bible or Quran or whatever uh, um, uh, sources. I think that is acceptable. No, so thank you for sharing the the, the Muslim beliefs about being morally applied. All right. What about on the side of the Roman Catholic? Ba kami gusto mo share dito. Sir, um, may I just say two things? Last na po. Yes po, kahit, kahit marami pa, walang problema. <laughs> Thank you po. Um, una po sir, um, even if the Muslim people, I had, um, most of my colleagues were Muslims. Um, they are one of the nicest and most generous people on earth. Especially during Ramadan, they're, they're very generous. And second one, Sir Ray, I have a question po. Because back in Brunei, um, as Filipinos, there are cases wherein we Filipinos were recruited to be converted to Islam and we are going to be paid. As a matter of fact, I was almost recruited. It's just that I couldn't do something which is not laman uh, ng puso. So I, I was not able to, to go on to the recruitment, quote unquote. Is, is it the same? The survey, you parang pag na convert ka to Islam, you are going to be paid. Yes, uh, maybe not everyone is aware of the fact 
that in the Islamic world, there are two important factions. The one, one is the Sunnis, uh, uh, Sunnis, the majority, I'm a Sunni, and the others, the minority are called Shia. Oh, I uh, the Shias are the, the ones that are affiliated with Iran. And these are the disobedient. I'm sorry, I have to say that. Uh, it's too much information. The disobedient faction, the, the disobedient group. And this minority, the Shias, are the ones that are saying that if you join us, we're going to pay you. And I think uh, some Filipinos here are taking taking advantage of that they really uh they really get money when they get recruited or when they embrace islam but as shia uh but there is something dangerous about being being shia because once you embrace uh islam with the shias and you revert back to catholicism they will behead you oh my god that's okay, how they are because uh, they, they, they fund you and they give you money when, when you embrace Islam. All right, sir. Yeah, yeah. I... That, that's the reason why. But these are the people. These are also the people who, who, whom you know uh, back when you were in Brunei. All right, sir. I, I was almost recruited because it, it's, it was quite tempting, to be honest. I mean, the and amount of money. Really big money, like like 20,000 pesos in equivalent? Um, in Brunei, sir, it's, they are going to pay you, I think, um, 5,000 Brunei dollar. In, in peso, that's about 150,000. Oh, that's big money. Yes, sir. Bigger it money. was quite tempting, to be honest. But then I couldn't eat the money, ng ganun -ganun na lang, especially when my heart is not into it. So, yun lang po. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Jojo Alvin, for that uh, for that question to Sir Ray. So may, may I hear from the Catholic side? Ayan, puro, puro Muslim side ang ating na, narinig, no? Uh, again, this is not a, this is not a uh, battle between religions, no? Hello, sir. Sir, I just would like to share some points. Ah, uh, sorry, di kita, di kita nakikita ang video. Uh, sino po, sino po? Okay. Hello, sir. Aileen. Aileen, sir. Medyo mahina lang po kasi ang humina po ang internet po. Okay. Uh, sir, with regards to, uh, I, I'm not going to uh, include religion, but maybe this uh, would have a touch of religion also. But I just would like to have, uh, to share this uh, views of mine that uh, morality is uh, culturally conditioned. Morality is culturally conditioned and that our behavior based on moral views or our moral perception is also shaped by our culture. Like uh, during the Spanish era, uh, their perceptions and outlook of men comparing uh, the status of men and women during that time, men uh, we regarded as of uh, with high status compared with women, but uh, today they're both equal in terms of career, in terms of professional growth, and in all aspect, almost in all aspect. And today also we have this so-called LGBT. There are actually several changes. So meaning to say that it is not only uh, based on on a cultural uh, cultural setup or setting of uh, of uh, based on our belief of what morality is, but also based on what is going in society. So social changes can also be one of the factors why we have specific or several views about morality, like gender and LGBT. That's why, sir. The subject uh, seminar in ethical theory would really help us in our endeavor or research endeavors like the issues on gender, gender issues on morality, issues uh, specifically about the status of women and men in the society, 
about the empowerment of women and how far women can go uh, beyond, okay, beyond the uh, beyond its uh, ability or capacity. Uh, not necessarily to be equal with men, but uh, but most of the time is to prove that they also have something to be contributed to the society. So the morality here, sir, kasi may mga nagsasabing, ang babae dapat sa bahay lang, hindi pwede sa trabaho, hindi pwede magtrabaho. May mga issues din sa family, for example, na hindi kailangan uh, masacrifice ang family, kailangan ang babae nandun kasi siya ang ilaw ng tahanan. So this could be one of the issues that we we can discuss in uh, our future researches, di po ba? Kaya nga po, mas gusto ko talagang matutunan yung mga ethical issues pa na po pwedeng i-apply sa research paper at sa research study. Mm -mm. Right. Yun lang, sir. Pero in in uh, uh, in general, sir, well, I, I don't I wouldn't like to touch religion, but I just would like to be neutral, lalo na sa presentation, specifically if it has something to do with research or paperworks. All right. Thank you for sharing, Mama Eileen. And I am very happy that as early as today, you are already looking forward to your dissertation writing. No? <laughs> yeah, so you may, you may relate this topic to your current program, PhD, major in English, tama? English language and literature, ba? or English lang? Ano nga din program niyo? PhD in? Major in English po, Doc. PhD. English po, Doc. English, Doc. Major in English. Okay, so my suggestion since you talk about your research paper, uh, you try, you just try to connect your major subject with, the, with your current uh, research paper. No? Because that's the basic rule in writing a research paper. It must be about your line of specialization. It must be about your professional subjects or major subjects, which is, in your case, English. And then, siguro, pwede mo tong i-connect. I-connect mo na lang siya. But your major concern is any, any topic about English. That's why I was asking a while back kung ano to, kung major nyo ba to, kung cognate or core. You mentioned it's elective or cognate. So this is not your major. Parang that's an, an, an additional knowledge on your part. The, si, siguro feeling ko nung, uh, when, the, when the curriculum was conceptualized by University of Batangas, they would like their PhD in education graduates to have a good, good grasp of what um, ethics is. Siguro yun ang, yun ang, ano. And that's a good point because there are so many, there's so many intellectually um, uh, performing leaders right now that are not morally upright that are that are doing an ethical an ethical thing so to me this is a very good subject this is a this is a very good cognate or elective subject that can enhance the 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 the, the three h's of your of your personality as an academic uh, leader uh, what do i mean by ano uh, three h's the head your cognitive ability the hands, your, your capability to do, your function or the psychomotor. And do not forget the heart. heart. Because the heart is where, um, is, is where the being upright is coming from. However intelligent you are, but if you are not morally upright, it's useless. And that's why I mentioned to you that I am a public school district supervisor in the Department of Education. That's one of my advocacies now, uh, not just to develop the head and the hands, but also the heart, because uh, these, these uh, pupils or students in the Department of Education are possible future leaders, future managers, no? That we that possibly they, they will be running the country in the future, and they need to develop their heart, the affective part of the affective part of of their of their personality, no, and 
this this ethics i think should be also part of the affective uh, component of being a holistic person holistic the entirety of of being a person hindi ka lang matalino hindi ka lang masipag kundi may puso ka no maraming salamat sa sharing mo miss idy oh, meron pa ba one more sharing before i summarize the answers that you provided in in the triplew.menti I have a, I received a comment here na uh, natutuwa naman ako na bago bago pala sa iyo to. Uh, thank you Miss Michelle. Thank you also for for learning this application na ngayon mo lang natutunan. Actually pwede niyo gamitin nito uh, sa mga online classes niyo. If you do not want a very noisy class, <laughs> naka-mute lang yung audio nila, pwede silang sumagot dito. Because this, this actually, actually in the future, when you do your research, pwede nang ang data gathering nyo through www.menti.com. Kung qualitative yan, pwede na to. Pwede rin yan sa quanti. Pag pinag-aralan nyo yan, may quanti part din yan. Gibigeri sa inyo yan ng, ng, ano, ng frequency counts. No? Later on. And for the entire module, may encounter nyo yung aking Menti application. Because I, I subscribe to Menti. Because I find it very useful at the same time, it makes my 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 discussion interactive. No, you may you you I may not be getting hundred percent verbal participation, but I think from this uh, output, nakita ko na lahat kayo nag participate. No, so that's the advantage. Any more? Any more comment about being ethical and being morally upright? We have heard the the side of. Uh, the, the beliefs rather of the Muslim, the Muslim beliefs. Um, so, ano naman, sa Roman Catholic naman. Of course, yun, 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 nasabi ni Ma'am Aileen, maganda rin. Uh, meron ba na mag-share ng kanilang, ng kanilang experience or ng kanilang wisdom about being morally upright? Wala na. Hello po, Doc. Hello ah. po. Good morning. Good morning. Teka lang, hanapin lang kita. Nasaan ka? Uh, Sir Joshua po. Sir Joshua, where is your camera, Sir Joshua? Nabasag? Ako po ay, ah, no, sir. Ako po ay nasa kabundukan ngayong panahong ito. Ah, namumundo ka. Nasa, uh, I mean, sir, nasa Lubu po ako. Uh, taga Lubu po kasi ako mismo, sir. Lubu, Batangas. Ah, alright. Okay. So, kaka kakainin yung internet mo kapag uh, ano, ng camera. It will eat a lot of your megabytes. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, kaya po, the reason why I got connected, disconnected, lagi pong gano'n. Okay. <laughs> pasok, labas, pasok, labas. Medyo mahina po yung uh, internet. Ayun, provinsyang provinsya pala. No problem. So, would you like to share something? Uh, yes, sir. So, on my part po, I get the point na kapag sa Roman Catholic po siguro, we have so much freedom. Kumbaga po, uh, it feels like na... If I'm not mistaken po with other re religion po uh yung uh, when it comes to money or income parang if I'm not mistaken meron silang binibigay na certain percentage ng mga kinikita nila like uh with Iglesia ni Cristo yung mga ganun po. Uh unlike po sa uh, uh sa mga Catholic po um they have the freedom po kung magano yung ibigay nila or voluntary minsan sumimba or hindi uh mag-participate sa mass or not ganun po That's right. Yeah, you're right. Yes, sir. You're done. Uh, Sir Joshua, are you done? Or you're disconnected now? <laughs> All right, that, that's right. In, in, in the Roman Catholic uh, religion that we, that majority of us belong, um, there is this, what we call... Uh, the, 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 po talaga. Sorry, sorry po talaga. Sorry po. Yeah. Ako na disconnect po. No problem, no problem. Kung, ano, kung okay ka na, okay na. No problem. Uh, kung may connection ka pa, just be there. Just hang on and listen. <laughs> Pag nawala ka na, we will, I will understand na, ano, na we lost you. 
<laughs> Iba pala yung meaning na we lost you, no? Okay, anyway, um, in, in the Roman Catholic uh, beliefs kasi there's this what they call, um, may, meron pa rin application ng democracy, no? Even when, we, when you go to church, <clears throat> yung sinasabi ni Sir Joshua about impokya tayo ni sa Iglesia ni Cristo that they need to um, give 10% yata of their total income to to the church no uh, tight sir tight ah five i'm sorry i'm sorry no, tight tight or kapo kapo tight spot yeah sure all right yeah so they they, they are obliged no that's why uh, you will notice i do not know if i am right uh, you will notice their churches are really great no in terms of their infrastructure because of of the sources of funds. Imagine mo kung milyong, million milyong INC yan, kahit walang pera, mag-iika po yan kasi required sila. No? And katulad din, katulad din ating Catholic, required din sila na magsamba. May samba silang tinatawag. At yung samba nila, required sila that they be um, uh, well-dressed or very presentable, long-dressed for the girls and at least follow for the boys no so uh, sa roman catholic naman of course um ang at ang ano lang ang uh, meron lang konting autonomy like uh, you are not obliged but of course you are you are we are invited but we are not obliged hindi katulad sa iglesia na talagang chinecheck yata yung attendance <laughs> at kapag meron kang certain absences ay tatanggalin ka sa kanilang ano sa kanilang uh, organization. So anyway, uh, religion is not an issue for as long as we are doing what is right and we are doing what is ethical. I think we have no problem with that. And to me it is very important this subject is one of the important subject although it is an it is an elective subject because we as uh, educators are role models of our students. And we uh, we, we, we must be practicing this regularly para meron silang tinatawag na uh, paggagayahan. No? So I am very happy with the answers that you provided because uh, most or 100% of your answers are almost correct. No? Especially that are morally upright. Uh, the act is ethical in nature when it is accepted by the society, when the act is appropriate when it is good for everyone nabasa ka dyan. especially when our when our act is based on principles we have mga basic principles in um, in ethics actually even in the graduate school you need to practice what we call um, uh, principles or ethical principles the principles of maleficence beneficence no Example, if you're going to do a research, you have to ensure that the conduct of research will not produce harm to your respondents. It will not produce harm to your respondents. Take note, take note of that, maleficence. Rather, it, it will uh, provide benefit or beneficence. No? It will provide benefit to your respondents. That's why one of the ethical considerations in the conduct of research is asking permission first no, from the respondents through the informed consent. Through the informed consent. If you are um, allowed by the university to go on with the conduct of research, then you need to secure an informed consent. An informed consent is, is a way of checking whether you are not violating any rights of the respondents. Because once the respondents, once your uh, research respondents uh, felt that they were forced to be part of your research, that is not ethical. It is ethical when they voluntarily submitted themselves that they be part of your, um, of your study. Another ethical considerations that I'd like to relate para mas applicable sa PhD program niyo and applicable sa dissertation writing niyo is that um, the ethics paper must undergo I'm sorry the research paper must undergo an ethics review committee 
So that's one of the things that uh, schools, each school, schools must have. That's why whenever I visit me, being uh, one of the Pakokowa creditors, who is always in charge in the area of research, I would always look into the composition of the research ethics committee. Because this committee, uh, the function is to ensure that the respondents will not be harmed. So how do we know that the respondents will not be harmed? Be harm? First, the respondents must be of the legal age. In the Philippines, the legal age is, ano ba? Ano ba ang legal age sa Pilipinas? Sa Amerika, sa US kasi 16 eh. Sa Philippines. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Oh, 18. So that is why, as much as possible, when we conduct research, we involve. Uh, respondents that are below 18. That's part of being ethical. Another thing, if in case you will be gathering data that are too personal, sensitive, and would uh, present medical conditions, you need to think twice or thrice. Because according to the, to the National Privacy Commission of the Philippines, there is this what we call Data Privacy Act of 2012 that was launched. And uh, it states that we as a researcher should not divulge any personal sensitive information pertinent to the respondents. So getting the name of the students or of the respondents, getting the personal information like home address, email address, phone number, etc., etc. Pakibasa na lang po yung mga personal and sensitive. Hindi dapat yun nagiging part ng research paper ninyo. So your paper is ethical if it is not violating the, ethic, the ethics of research. And one of the ethics of research is that it should not violate the Data Privacy Act. When you conduct research, kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, i-relate na natin tong subject doon sa inyong actual eh. Kasi kapag puro discussion ng utilitarianism, deontology, parang ano, very technical na pwede nyo naman basahin eh. We will now try to connect this, this, this kind of this, this ethics to what you're going to do in the future para, mag para hindi masayang yung subject natin at para hindi rin boring, no? And uh, as I was saying, when, when you do a research, you need to uh, read the Data Privacy Act provisions. We should not be violating the data privacy. No? And then we should always ask permission from the institutions or from the departments where we are going to conduct the study. And part of the uh, write-up of our paper is uh, the exclusion of the real name of the institution. We do not name, we do not name Lipa University or Batangas State University or your University of Batangas because that is a violation of Data Privacy Act. We may say one of the universities in Batangas. O ganun lang yon. Or your respondents will be private uh, educational institutions or private basic education institutions in Batangas, but never mention the name. When you present the respondents of the study, you, you will just say school A, school B, school C, and so on and so forth. You will never mention the name. So that is part of being ethical because according to data privacy, uh, when we release informations about, the, about personal and sensitive information, there is a corresponding criminal no liability or charges that may be given to anyone who will violate that data privacy. So it would be nice that uh, we, you are in the doctorate program. Nasa, nasa, ano naman yan, nasa Google naman yan. Try to read so that when you write your dissertation, ramdam ko yung iba sa inyo, ipapunta na doon. Kindly read that. Because in, during this time, kaya ang, ang pagiging morally upright, ang pagiging ethical, tama din yung sinabi ng iba. Na we are ethical 
according to the norms of the society, if it is accepted by the society. Before 2012, Data Privacy Act is not yet enacted. So therefore, uh, questions such as, what is the profile, what is the demographic profile of the respondents in terms of age, gender, monthly income, parents' educational attainment, et cetera, et cetera. Nilalagay natin yun noon, before 2012. But after the approval and, and enactment of the Republic Act, of, I'm sorry, of the Data Privacy Act, bawal na po yun. So meaning, tama rin yung sinabi ng iba, that for us to be morally upright, we have to be abiding, abiding, and we have to be um, knowledgeable about the different laws, no? the, legality, the legalities, the, re the different republic acts. Because once we violated them, of course, there is a corresponding punishment. It is also ethical that when we borrow information, when we adapt data or information or findings from the previous researches, it is unethical that we cite the author, the author of the previous research. Aside from citing them, we do not copy them verbatimly. Because if you copied, copied the contents of the previous author and pasted those contents in your paper, that is a form of plagiarism. And there is also an act, a republic act, that, uh, that, that does not allow us to perform plagiarism. So see, this being ethical, I would like to relate in your current situation, in your current scenario. Ayoko masyado maging very technical and very generic we will try now to uh, contextualize these ethical theories and try to apply in your current setup. No? So lahat ng nilagay nyo rito, uh, tama ito. Tama ito. Based on culture, follow what moral is, does not cause any harm. Ito yung binanggit ko kanina. It, it, it should produce um, good, goodness. And that is what you call beneficence, no? Hindi dapat maleficence, no? Morally accepted, universally accepted. Kasi if it is not universally accepted, then marami ang magogo against sa'yo. The sad part of, of, morally, of being morally upright when it is dictated by the society is that even though you are doing the right, Thing, but if the society, majority of the society, majority of the people in the society would tell you that you are not right, then if, even if you are morally upright, then you are still not upright because it, it is dictated sometimes by the society. That's the saddest part of, of being ethical. No? Halimbawa, um, in the in the US, in the US, uh, if they wear short shorts, even bikini or two pieces, eh, two piece in the beach, nako walang unethical issues don. <laughs> Meron pa mga mga may mga na naked nude beach dun eh. so parang sa kanila okay lang yon. But not not but not in a no Muslim countries like Arab countries. Kasi ang, ang mga babae sa Arab countries, minsan mata lang nakikita. Tama ba, Sir, ano? Sir Ray? Mata lang or mukha lang ang nakikita. Tama po yun. That's right. So, so, ibig sabihin, sa ibang bansa, like the US and the Europe, ang paghuhubad ay ano, ay ano na lang, wala na. Wala nang, ano, wala nang, wala nang, wala nang, at tawag dito, violations. So I'm wondering kung meron kasama sa Miss Universe from Saudi Arabia. Meron bang Miss Saudi Arabia? Wala po. Definitely. <laughs> wala. Ah, sir, parang wala. Parang wala. Parang wala. They should be wearing hijab all the time. Because, uh, oh. 
it's a basic rule for women, Muslim women to wear oh, scarves. Kaya nga. Kaya nga. So, yung alala ko doon, kung meron sa Sally from Saudi Arabia, eh, yung pagtutupis pa lang, bawal na. <laughs> eh, tupis, parang ano na yun eh. Uh, ilan ilang ilang pirasong balat na lang ang natataktan doon eh. So <laughs> lalo siguro bawal na bawal 'yun kasi alam mo pag Muslim talaga namang ang haba ng damit niyan. How do you call the dress in Muslim? For uh, the the what for the dress itself is called abaya. The uh-huh. the, the head scarf is called hijab. All right. Okay. So see Uh, why why am I sharing that? Because the the moral being morally upright and being ethical um, is always dependent is always dependent on where you are located. So that that's why this ethical thing is actually not generic. It is dictated. It is always dictated by your society. By the the by, by your location, the country where you are located. So, uh, but since we are in the Philippines, and it's nice na meron sharing from Saudi Arabia. But since we are in the Philippines, it would be nice that we educators are also knowledgeable about what is morally upright in the Philippines. No, as I've mentioned, we are um, we are covered by three. Umbre- and we are under the three umbrellas of what we call ethical in nature, the umbrella of the divine law. Of course, meron tayong Bible. No? And we have this what we call uh, the, 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 legal, the legal law, the legalities. No? And of course, meron din tinatawag na societal law. <laughs> na minsan, kahit wala naman sa law, meron silang sarili mga paniniwala. May, may, may... Can I say something, uh, Doc? Yes, 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 sorry. Regarding teachers. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Because everyone would be able to relate uh, because all of us here in this room are teachers. Uh, when, when teachers do something wrong, it becomes magnified. Ten times. Ten times over, maybe twenty times over. Because you are a teacher and you are supposed to be good examples. So whilst we say that in the Philippines, the weather is so humid, you can go out wearing the, the skimpiest shorts, even in the mall, still people will, will frown upon the sight of a teacher wearing immodest clothes. Not because it's allowed, you can do it. Not because the society allows everyone to do it. Would It would also apply to you, but it also depends on how, how you stand in the society. And usually your being a teacher would be, would be in, under the microscope the moment you do something wrong. Like, hey, you are a teacher. How come you did that? You, you had an extramarital relationship. How come you didn't know about that? And add the fact that some of us are working in Catholic schools. Because I used to teach in a Catholic school. Uh, I was with Santa Teresa College in Bowen for four years. That was my first teaching job. And of course, some some teachers would end up having premarital sex sorry for the the blatant word that they will get pregnant short of nine months after or they will have a baby short of nine months uh when you count from the wedding date and definitely that lady or that woman will get expelled or will get expelled from from the school where she is teaching because obviously she had premarital sex and people will say, how come she didn't know that? She was working in a Catholic school and she had premarital sex. But uh, yeah, the, my point is uh, not because everyone is doing it, it becomes right, 
but sometimes it becomes very, very wrong depending on what you do, depending on what kind of job you do, especially for us teachers. Sorry, but that's one of the things that we have, uh, one of the price that we have to pay as teachers because we have to be good examples. Yeah, all right, that's right. That's, that's true also. And since you're talking about the, the teacher's activities, when we pass the licensure examination for teachers, there is a teacher's creed, no? And there is this what you call professional standards for teachers that if we violate any, any of those component contents of the creed, then um, there is a big possibility that, that our license may be revoked by the Professional Regulation Commission. So <coughs> that is one um, control mechanism, <coughs> sorry, that, that is one of the controlling mechanisms of the Philippine, uh, of the Philippine laws that um, being a teacher is really a big responsibility that we have morally, that we should be morally upright, no? And if, if we are not morally upright, there is a big possibility also that the Professional Regulation Commission upon investigation can revoke our uh, licenses, our license as a professional teacher. Another, another thing is that our actions would always depend on the institutions where we are connected. Each institution has this what we call um, policies and guidelines that are stipulated in the manual. You have a faculty manual or, or teacher's manual where um, uh, the, the, the different actions are clearly stipulated. And if you violated one of the actions that are against their, their, their um, policies, of course, siempre meron due process. You will go the you will go the grievance procedure, the investigation procedure, and after finding out that you are, if you are, um, uh, how do you call this? Uh, if you are positive <laughs> for that, for that guilty, act, sir. Guilty. guilty or positive for that act, guilty, then the school has the right to remove you from the post. So I think that's, it, that's one of the things that uh, everyone is uh, aware upon entering any any organization that's the first thing that uh, we we did no we reviewed we actually the hr department provided us um, it, it, an orientation of the do's and don'ts of the institution so again as i was saying the an ethical act or being morally upright uh, is also um, dictated by the organizations where we are connected. It depends. And each organization, either private or public, would have their own uh, policies and procedures and would have their own parameters and checklists in determining whether you are doing the ethical or the unethical way. No? So thanks for sharing that survey. So um, just to summarize, based on what your, you, you stated in this uh, menti.com, I could sense that, so tama aking hinala, na you are already have an idea, if not a uh, um, small idea, big ideas about what uh, ethical act would mean, no? Naka-enumerate na dito. And thank you for answering this. So para na akong nagpa-ano, para na akong nagpa-research, nagpa-qualitative research. No? So dito, actually, from here, if, you're, if, you're, if I'm going to conduct a qualitative research, meron na kagad ako mga themes. Yun ang maganda dito sa application na to, oh, pag-qualitative yung paper mo, meron na kagad themes. No? No? Na according to my respondents, for, for, uh, for a teacher to become ethical, First, they must be morally upright kasi yun ang pinakamalaki na sagot. And then, pwede ko nang enumerate yung iba. Pwede ko nang emerge yung iba. Magkakaroon ako ng thematic presentation. Halimbawa, based on um, principles, principles ng uh, 
based on law, uh, divine law, kasi may God's law ko nakita dito, the human law, etc. Et so yun, yun ang maganda rito sa menti, no? Nakakatuwa na yung mga sagot ninyo ay na, na ilagay natin dito. And I will not erase this kasi uh, now I know that the University of Batangas PhD in English students are uh, very knowledgeable already about what ethical act is. All right? So let us continue. Um, of course, we mentioned that um, the, the, the being ethical, being ethical rather, is dictated by the location where we are. So I tried to get the um the the different um the different um contents or informations or different um opinions of being ethical both uh from from the US and uh and from the local no so i will first present to you a video presentation about um, the, the title of the video presentation is Ethics in the Age of Technology. Because we are now in a technological age. Do you agree with that? Okay. Hindi na ako yes. Hindi na ako yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hindi na ako magbabanggit ng ethics uh, during the 1900s. <laughs> Kasi that's the first person. Yes, of course. Uh, pag mm -hmm. research nyo, 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 nyo na lang yung ethics ng 1900s. Pero, yun ang baseline natin ngayon. And let us update ourselves as regards to what is ethics uh, during this uh, technological age according to some personalities. So, I got a video here. I'd like to share with you. Kindly listen, mga ano to? Mga 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, kindly bear with me. And later on, we will uh, have another sharing about the video. So in his wisdom, Stefan thought there wouldn't be any tension between somebody who was brought up in Mexico and Germany today. <laughs> but anyway, we'll get on to that later. Um, normally I talk about science, and today I'm going to talk about ethics. And the reason I'm going to talk about ethics is because there's been a lot of distraction from science by people who are certain that they know the answer. And part of it is promoted by ourselves, because when we take a new job, we get this great big book that just drops on our desk, and it's the ethics manual. And the ethics manual tells you this is right, and this is wrong, and it's pretty black and white. And it's one of the most boring documents ever written by a human being. Right? I mean, if you don't know this stuff by the time you take that job, you shouldn't be in that job. Because it's telling you stuff you already know. And I guess the question that I want to address today, and particularly in today's climate, which is slightly polarized, is who's teaching us what it is to be ethical? So I'd like you to take about 10 seconds in your own minds and just think through who taught you right from wrong? All right, now that you've got the answer in your minds, here's some of the answers that sometimes you get. So you have a holy book that tells you the stuff, and mama teaches you, and the preacher teaches you, and the teacher teaches you, and the lawyer teaches you, and the doctor, and of course the government, and a whole bunch of other people, your peers, and Facebook, and Twitter, and all kinds of good ways of learning right from wrong. Well, let's take a little journey to this little building. So this is the downtown market in Charleston, South Carolina. Wonderful handicrafts, wonderful food. Do you know why the steps of this building were shaped in this, in this way? They were built to exhibit the merchandise. 
That's where they sold people. And on this particular day, they were selling 94 prime healthy Negroes, 39 men, 15 boys, 24 women, 16 girls. What the hell was wrong with these people? Why didn't they understand right from wrong? Didn't they get the ethics manual? Well, let's go through the sources that we just talked about. So the first one was the Holy Book. And there's a couple of passages in the Holy Book that might have justified and promoted and allowed slavery. How about Mama? Well, the best-selling book was Uncle Tom's Cabin, and Mama was writing all about plantation life in South Carolina. And what Mama was teaching wasn't exactly that we should be freeing the slaves. So then you'd go to church on Sunday, and the lead preacher, the Billy Graham of his time, was Richard Furman. And he was arguing that the holding of slaves is justified by the doctrine and example contained in the Holy Writ, and is completely consistent with Christian uprightness. Because of course he was picking up the Bible and reading selective passages from the Bible. And by the way, if you want to know more about this, you can go to Furman University and pray in Furman Chapel. Fortunately then, they got a really smart guy. So this is an Oxford Don, chemistry professor, philosopher, radical, and an abolitionist. Until he got to be president of the University of South Carolina, at which point he wrote the 1826 pamphlets outlining the belief that slave labor is an economic necessity and the white race is superior. So here's an abolitionist who lands there and changes his mind. Cooper Library was dedicated in 1976. A doctor, well, a doctor examines bodies. A doctor should know that we're all the same, which takes us to J. Marion Sims, the founder of gynecology, who thought, there's no need for surgical anesthesia for blacks or Irish, they feel no pain. And he bought slaves to experiment on. And you guessed it, there is a statue in downtown Charleston to J. Marion Sims, and until a few months ago, you could jog by his statue in Central Park. This was not an obscure doctor. Constitution, all men are created equal. DC slavery code, nope. Here's the way we keep slaves. Why didn't these people know? Well, then comes the question, who exactly was supposed to teach them? If you are Peter Jr. and you go to church and you go to school and you read the laws, and Mama, and Papa, and the Holy Book, and everybody else is telling you this is okay, who exactly is supposed to teach you ethics? And this is actually very personal to me, because see, not that long ago, this was fine, and this was not. And I grew up in Mexico, at a Jesuit school, going to church at 7 a.m. every morning, for an hour of mass in Latin, and guess what? The holy book, and the preacher, and the teacher, and mama, and papa, and the laws, and everybody else told me being gay was a sin. It was criminal behavior. That wasn't that long ago. I mean, I know I'm old, but that wasn't that long ago. And if Twitter and Facebook and Google and all these things had existed when I was in high school, I don't think that I would like the posts that I would have put up then, and I don't think you'd appreciate the posts that I would have put up then. So when we go and we judge our ancestors, 
and we go on and say, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so with a great deal of self-righteousness. We have to consider partially where did they live, what were they taught, and should the ethical judgment of our peers be different than that of our ancestors? Do we apply the same standards to somebody who discriminates today than to somebody who was taught something different 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago? Do we put any context on it? Are there degrees of awful within an awful system? I'm not advocating slavery. I'm not advocating bigotry. I'm not advocating any kind of discrimination against LGBT. I'm trying to put a context on something that I lived through that I'm very sorry I lived through. That in retrospect, I know I was absolutely wrong. And this is an argument for a word that doesn't exist very much today in this very polarized left-right world. Because this side knows it's right, and this side knows it's right, and you just don't have a lot of meeting in the middle. And what we're doing is we're going through this culture war during a time when technology is changing stuff very quickly. It's changing who we speak to, it's changing who we talk to, it's changing what we can do. And in that context, ethics doesn't become black and white, it becomes Fifty Shades of Grey. So pick a random title. <laughs> I don't think we understand how fast and how radically technology is changing us. See, the fundamental act of evolution is sex. No sex, no evolution. And we take it for granted that we have been redesigning sex. So how do we think about this? Well, bring back grandpa and grandma, and let's have a birds and the bees talk with them. OK? But instead of bringing them back as nice white-haired folks, we're going to take a time machine. We're going to bring them back as hormone-filled 18-year-olds. So you now have your four grandparents sitting in front of you, and you're talking to them about sex. Hmm, that's an interesting conversation. Point number one. <laughs> you can now have sex and not have a baby. Do you understand how weird that would be two generations ago? Because every animal in every human generation normally sex equal conception. And now you're telling them, oh no, we can have free sex and never conceive. And then you go into this stuff. And you say, oh, by the way, I'm going through cancer treatments, so I'm going to conceive a child in vitro. Oh, really? Well, tell me what that is. Well, you see, you take an egg, and you take a sperm, and you mix them together in a Petri dish, and you conceive a child. Huh. OK, we, we heard about that. I heard about that in grammar school. That was called the Immaculate Conception. <laughs> and by the way, that used to be a miracle, kids. So you're now telling me you're performing millions of miracles every year. Uh-huh. And then we've got this surrogate mother thing. So we can freeze eggs, we can have a surrogate mother, we can have identical twins born 50 years apart. Oh, of course you can. So we've decoupled sex from conception, we've decoupled sex from physical contact, and we've decoupled sex from time in two generations. Now let's come back to the ethics. Had we polled society, should you do this two generations ago, they would have said, hell no. And they would have taught never do this. So how do we establish the ethics for the next generations as technology changes what you can do? Is it a complete coincidence that the first areas to become abolitionist were the first areas to industrialize? I'll bring 1,000 horsepower. You bring 100 slaves. We'll have a free market and see who wins. Technology has a lot to do with changing the future. And as we sit here today, now try the same thought experiment. Have your grandkids, age 60, bring you back and tell you about sex. Do you think sex and conception and reproduction is going to look the same two generations from now? How do we establish an ethical conversation on that? How do we decide what should be allowed, what shouldn't be allowed? Do we need a certain humility 
to judge the past, and to establish the rules for the future. Because they may be doing things that we might find really strange. And just as the last series of points, it may be that we are doing things today that will seem pretty darn unethical to our kids because technology changes the boundaries of what is allowable. Technology sometimes drives very different ethical mores. I really want your feedback on this because this is the beginning of a book that I'm writing and I think there's a series of things we are doing that are going to change radically. Let me give you one example. Lab-grown hamburger, 2013, $380,000. Not a lot of people buying lab-grown hamburgers. Lab-grown hamburger, 2015, 20 bucks. Lab-grown hamburger, another five years. Same price or cheaper than growing an animal for three years, feeding it, slaughtering it, using all that water, putting up all the greenhouse gases, treating the animal very poorly. When you have an alternative and you don't have to go vegetarian and you can still eat meat, in one generation, how do you think people are going to treat a picture like this? When there are clear alternatives that are by technology, so we don't have to do this, how do you think they're going to judge us? And there's a whole series of other examples of things that we might be doing today that technology is going to displace the ethics and move the ethical goalposts. And it's important to understand that both in how we judge people in the past, not justify it. I'm not justifying slavery, I'm not defending slavery, I'm not defending discrimination against gays, I'm not defending any of this stuff. But we are going to be judged, and there's far more of a record of how we're gonna be judged because we've all been covered by electronic tattoos that aren't gonna disappear. Whether you call it Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever else, people are going to be able to look in detail at who we were, at what we were, at what we thought. So let's teach a little bit of generation, a little bit of ethical humility, both to our own generation and to the next generation, as this collision between ethics and technology takes place. Let's be a little less self-righteous, a little more generous, and a little bit less judgmental towards the past and hope the next generations are less judgmental towards us. Establishing civility in conversations is going to be really important. Understanding where the other person is coming from, what they were taught, is really important. Helping bridge towards what we discover is the right arc of history, which I think we're on. I think this is the best time to be alive despite all the stuff that's going on there. But we need patience, we need humility, we need to reach out and we need to build bridges. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, you were able to listen um, the ethical uh, component from the perspective. Uh, I think uh, he is from um, the, the, the American countries, right? Right, parang ano, parang Mexico yung sinabi niya, tama ba? But, but, um, yes, sir, Mexico. Mexico. But my concern now is after watching the video, um, I would like to solicit again um, an information from you out of the video that you, uh, uh, you watched. Kindly answer my simple question using the menti, menti.com again. Uh huh, yeah. So from the video presented, what ethical lessons were you able to derive? Because she was able, he was the, the, the presenter was able to combine ethics and technology and it's very timely, no? So can you, can you derive some 
um, ethical lessons out of the presentation of the video, from the video rather. So again, it's www.menti.com and use the code 4334-35798. All right. May isa ng samagot, acceptance, ethical humility, and respect. Technology twisted ethics. Hmm. The exercise of ethical humility. Yeah. All right. Respect, change of perception, acceptance of value. Uh, so far, ang nasa gitna dito, exercise ethical humility. Yeah. yeah, ethical humility ang lumalabas. Sige, more answers please. All right, 11 answers. I think uh, marami na yan kasi 15, 15 kayo. So merong apat pa. So pwede na yan siguro. Uh, so based on, ayan, may masagot pa. Good, sige. Okay, sige. Okay. So can somebody tell me how were you able to um, uh, derive ethical humility as, as one of the takeaways of the of the of the video and how did you find the video by the way how did you find the the the, the speaker of the video anyone please sharing mga, mga, mga three minutes lang siguro Kasi may, may another video pa ako ipapakita na short video naman. Uh, okay. Yes po. Yes. yes, good morning everyone. Opo, basically, uh, perhaps ethical humility emerged from, from the factor of acceptance and respect. As we, as we noted in the talk of, of Juan Enrique's ethics in, in the age of technology, he presented a lot of perspectives. Okay? In fact, uh, opposing perspectives of, of ethics, okay? The, in the light of new technology, uh, what, what was not acceptable then might be acceptable now. So it's basically ethical humility, which is in the perspective of acceptance, just like the serenity prayer, okay? We need to accept the things that, that we cannot change. That's right. Th that would be all. Very, very good realization because really change is an, uh, uh, an inevitable. Talagang change is constantly um, changing. No? <laughs> change is constantly changing. Yun na lang yung constant ngayon in change. And what uh, the practices that are acceptable in the past may no longer acceptable in the present times. That's why if you notice, I, as much as possible, I do not want to be very technical about different ethical theories, mga deontology, mga utilitarianism. Those are the foundations, of course. But uh, I suggest na mag-independent learning na lang kayo doon. Basahin nyo yun. Uh, kasi ano naman yun eh, um, self-explanatory naman yun. But what I would like you to learn right now is try to, itong lumalabas dito, very good and very happy kasi nakuha ko yung gusto ko makuha from you, that there should be an ethical humility, that we cannot compare no, the ethics of the past from the present 
And each, as I mentioned before, a while back, these ethics is, uh, uh, is uh, the ethics are varying from one school to another, from one institution to another. And we just have- Saan? Saan kaya? Collector, naririnig namin. Okay. Bibiling halaman. May klase pa kong galas, Lester, naririnig namin yung usapan niya yung mga bibili. Pabili na rin kami ng lunch. <laughs> I'm really sorry, sir. <laughs> uh, that's part I'm really of, sorry, Bob. Uh, yeah, example ko na yan, ha? Part of the present times that we are using technology, part of being ethical is you, you mute your audio when you are not allowed to talk. <laughs> Para hindi namin ma- <laughs> ma- <laughs> Uh, okay. okay uh, I would like to uh, because I want to share something po. That's why I did not mute po my uh, no. okay lang. before you after okay. you po you share your uh, perspective po about okay. the video. I will call you after 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 my uh, my sharing, no. But uh, uh, <laughs> part part oh, ito, ha, we are in the technological age. <laughs> Joke lang ah, but we are in in the technological age. It's okay po. <laughs> Google Meet. Uh, Zoom applications, talagang yan na yung madalas na natin gagamitin up to the new normal. Actually, wala pa tayo sa normal eh. No? Papunta pa lang tayo sa new normal. Hanggat na sa MGCQ pa tayo, GCQ, hindi pa normal ang lahat. Pag nawala na yung MGCQ, doon pa lang tayo mag-new new normal. So, and, and, until we reach the new normal, talagang ang technology ay gagamitin na natin. And there should be an ethical humility and and the connection between ethics and ano ethics and um, ethics and technology no kaya nga tayo kung nag online class tayo we always remind additional ano, in, input we always remind our students that uh, upon entering our upon entering our uh, platform they can open the the their, their camera but always mute kasi sometimes there are conversations in your respective areas na baka hindi kailangan marinig during our discussion. No? And uh, of course, uh, that is also a form of respect. No? And when we, when, we accept, when we accept the differences of the, of the culture, that is also ethical. Kaya nakita ko rito, oh, acceptance and respect. And we build bridges at maray pa kayo mga sinagot dito no na magaganda rin and personally i like the sharing no of of the of of the of the speaker in the video very ano very timely talaga siya no the connection of ethics with technology so i'd like to give i'd like to give that uh, i'm i'm acknowledging uh, sir lester dr lester to please uh, say something please <laughs> I'm really sorry, sir. It's okay. It's okay. No problem po naman. Shout okay, po. <laughs> it's okay, po. Okay. So, uh, for me, watching the video, it's very eye-opening, especially to us who are, who was really born in this age, in the age of industrialization. It is, it is really giving us uh, information of how those, uh, the actions of the past, that's not our that we should not be we should not judge them because sometimes it could be taboo right if we would like if we would judge them basis based on on how they sell how they sell uh uh slaves okay especially uh, and also with the lgbt those that were not acceptable back then but things are changing like with also with the technology it's also stated in the video clip that this it's radically changing and with that being said, there's a question, how should we judge our ancestors? Or how also, how should we judge these millennials, uh, this, uh, 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 this youth? And with, uh, the answer of those would be the same answers with the, video, with the video clip that I have learned. It is not judging them. It's by looking into the details. What will, what are their culture? That's why that's why it's also intended that there was a culture, there were cultural wars back then. And the implication is it implied to us, especially that we learned 
something in the video clip to be to build bridges with the differences with our differences with others with other uh, groups with the lgbt with other races with other religions and then we should also have ethical conversations so that we could accept respect them and show civility that's what i learned in the video clip po. very good dr lester it, it seems like you really took down notes no while listening to the video clips I, I agree uh, with your observation, and it is also true that um, there's no blaming. Past is past. We learn. We learn from them, but the current is not related. Is not. Um, is not in any more connected with the past because today is very different from the past. If we're going to apply their culture, no, in our current situation. Baka iba na maging interpretation natin. Because it's, we, we, our environment is constantly changing. One example in education is the Industrial Revolution, if you heard of that. From Industrial Revolution 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 3.0 to 4.0 right now. So we cannot blame people from the past. Because uh, in the past, they're using IR 1.0. That was then. And, and during that time, that was acceptable. But if you are in the current 21st century situation where 4.0, IR 4.0 is being, is being acceptable or being implemented or being expected of us, and you are doing the 1.0, then there is a question now. Are you, are you complying with the standards? Is it acceptable? So there should be building bridge. Sabi nga nakita ko rito, oh, we should build bridges. If we learn from Industrial Revolution 1.0, thank you. 2.0, thank you also. 3.0, thank you also. But now it's 4.0. And 4.0 um, is different from the rest of the Industrial Revolution from the past. So there's no such thing as uh, the past is incorrect or correct. And there's no such, such thing that this, that this millennium, that this century is also correct or not correct. It is about accepting the current situation. It is about adapt, being able to adapt to what is, what, to what is uh, being practiced right now. To what is the, kaya may na na norm, the norm right now. Talking about LGBTQ in the past, I think uh, that is a big issue. But right now, there are countries, there, there are several countries where LGBTQ is uh, accepted with open hands and open legs. No, open, <laughs> open hands lang pala. <laughs> so uh, sometimes it depends on the culture of the, of the country, of the institution. It's just a matter of respecting, no? respecting one another and and. Ako gusto ko yung word na respect dito and acceptance because if you have that if you have that then you are ethical you are always ethical when you respect one another because to me respect is the is the root of all behavior if you respect one another if you respect that person you love that person you care for that person and you do not have any bad intention about that person you want to help that person etc cetera, etc cetera. The root of all of those behaviors is actually respect. Kasi minsan, love mo siya, pero wala ka namang respeto. Diba? Pero if you respect one another, it will grow and it will multiply at manganganak siya ng iba't iba pang mga behavior. No? So I totally agree with the first two uh, reactors, Dr. Marge and Dr. Lester. I think uh, Dr. Jo Joanne is uh, raising her hand. Uh, Madam, you are acknowledged. Good afternoon, po. Good afternoon, everyone. So um, I've learned a lot from the video presented and got uh, a lot of points to serve you, pero yung, ila, yung ilan lang po, I share po. Um, uh, I believe that it is founded on change and acceptance. That kagaya po nang sabi nyo, change is constant and uh, we need to accept. Kasi parang basically, 
um, it will be difficult for us if we will not embrace and accept the changes that are happening around us. Um, una po, in terms of technology, um, before, the, the comparison of the past and the present, before, um, our elders would always say na, ayan, nagsaselfong ka na naman, lagi ka na lang nandyan sa mga gadgets mo and the like. But nowadays, I mean, I think 80% or 90% of our transactions are uh, will include uh, technology, gadgets, laptop, parang kailangan, um, basically, most of the people, they also want to get the latest, what is in trend, though the others are still functioning. And then, uh, online transactions, personally po kasi before, I, I don't believe in those kinds kasi I'm afraid to be scammed or hacked. But uh, now, we should embrace na especially we should stay at home. So we need to um, study and learn how to transact online, the payments, and then uh, delivering of foods, everything. Everything is online. It will just arrive at the at your, at the, at your door front, yan, at your gates. Yan po. And then... Um, from my students, I hindi ko na sila na, na sa, na, when I ask them po, hindi na sila masyadong kinakwestiyon ng parents nila na, oh, nagsiselfon ka naman, ka na naman. Um, basically, the parents now are very supportive that they really uh, try it hard to um, make their children acquire nice gadgets for them to um, go with the flow of the system, not just the, in the academe but as well in the other aspects. And then the change of values. Kasi po, basically in the last part, uh, the speaker talked about uh, sex or the perception of it, the ano ba yung tama na ngayon at hindi tama. Basically before, uh, no, um, as far as I noticed from today's generation, the common ground for me lang naman of getting married today is that the woman is pregnant. Wherein before, um, parang sa matatanda, konting hawak lang ng kamay, nagkita lang kayo magkasama, then you should get married. So it's a change of values na ngayon, kailangan ba, ganun na talaga. Pero yun po ay personal observation ka lang. <laughs> And then, nun pong he listened. Ayun, Madam, Madam, ano, Madam uh, Joanne. <laughs> wala nang mag-aalay sa'yo ng ano, yung mag-aigib uh, ng tubig. Hahara na, wala na pong ganun ngayon. <laughs> In, lahat ngayon instant, no? Yes, that's, uh, oh, totally. Baka kasi makalimutan ko. Uh, the, the reason for that, because if you read the psychology, why... Uh, millennials would have um, different right now because when they when when you are a millennial you are under the te technological age where everything is very easy kaya nga mga millennial madaling mabugnot yan kasi hindi katulad dati yung kapanahonan ko yung mga kaidaran ko 65 and 70 kami noon typewriter no yes, na, sir pamalik yes, no. writer ulit ulit lahat yon Hindi ka tulad ngayon, ang mga kabataan ngayon, copy-paste lang. <laughs> Tapos, pag nag-typing, pag nagkamali, ando lang yan, na-ay sa kagad. So, you will see that our millennials right now, that the behavior is changing also because of what is happening in the environment. Everything is easy now because of technology. Meron nga ang ano eh, merong e Burol. Online burol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Kung kailangan mo muntun sa lamay, papanoorin mo lang doon sa online. So, para ka na rin nakipaglamay. No? O meron din mga online... Weddings plan. po. Wed online weddings. So, ito pa, ito pa ang isa. Uh, even, even the prostitution right now, hindi na kailangan face-to-face. -face. Pwede na rin ang online. So, so uh, I mean, uh, napakadaming changes ngayon sa sa ating anahon and um, we need to adjust but while we are adjusting to the current situation as educators we must always remind our our students no our learners 
that there should be a responsibility and accountability. Yung sinasabi natin yung think before you click. No? And they, it, it is now our responsibility that when we use technology, we always remind them. We always remind them that they should be responsible enough and accountable in every action, in every technolo technological action that they will do. That is now our goal. It's no longer, it's not just teaching them the, tech, the technical aspect of our subject. It's not about developing and bringing more brain cells or stimulating brain cells. This about building the affective component or the behavior of, of our learners. Yun ang gusto kong impart sa inyo. Because this is, this is now the connection of ethics and technology. And technology, while bringing us so many advantages, it has also disadvantages. Let us accept the reality. There's so many disadvantages. And that is why if you find your millennial students uh, very aggressive, disrespectful, and yung patients nila ay napaka-igse, that those are the attributes now of millennial. Para sa kanila, lahat ay mabilis. Para sa kanila, lahat ay ano, madali para sa kanila. Kasi hindi sila nasanay ng katulad natin. No? Tayo tayo, ako lang ba matanda rito? O yung mga kasing edad ko, yung mga 60 and above, no? uh, tayo matatanda na, nasanay tayo dati sa... Ano? <laughs> Yan, si, sila. Nasanay tayo sa panahon ng Kastila na pagkakastigo sa mga isudyante. No? Yung mga face the wall, yung mga kneel on the salt, kneel sa munggo, yung mga gano'n. Yung get out of the room, yung mga binabato ng, ano, ng, ng eraser. Ngayon hindi na, gawin mo yan. Baka na, na, po. Baka na 888 ka, na Duterte hotline ka. <laughs> so, you will see that really uh, it's changing. Everything is changing. No? Before LGBTQ is really not accepted. And um, lagi nilang tinatakot, it's a mortal scene. Pero ngayon, meron na mga lumalabas that LGBTQ is really part of the community. And they were, it's, it's not their fault when they born like that. Parang ganon. Kaya lang, syempre, sa mga pure Roman Catholic, mahirap nilang tanggapin yun. Kasi ang, ang tanging tinitingnan lamang ng pure Roman Catholic that uh, God created uh, man and woman. Diba? Pero even in the Bible, uh, meron din mga tinatawag na Sodom and Gomorrah. Meron, din mga, meron na rin mga issues about LGBTQ, especially in churches. No? Yung history ng, ano, ng Bible sa church. So ang sinasabi... Yes, po. Sino yung nag-yes? Me, sir, it's on the story about the Sodom and Gomorrah, yung gumuko po. So, it's not new actually. Kaya, kaya nga, hindi, maraming hindi nakakaintindi kung bakit uh, hindi matanggap ng, ng Christian uh, Christianity or Catholic uh, Association yung uh, LGBT. Kasi, ano naman, even in the history, meron na nun. So meaning to say, ganito yan. Ang aking, ang aking lesson ngayon na gusto kong sabihin sa inyo na people make the history. People make the history. Writers make the history. We do not know. Baka mamaya while writing the history, baka binabago lang nila yung mga content noon. No? Kasi nakalagyan naman yun sa Bible. Nakalagyan naman yun. Pero bakit ngayon, uh, ang issue ngayon, yung, yung nabanggit kasi ni Sir Lester, LGBT ko hindi raw tanggap. Eh bakit noon tanggap? So ibig sabihin, ethics is sometimes um, uh, dictated by, by an author, by an organization, by, by a group of people, or by a republic. Kasi in the world, for example, there are countries, there are republics na open. Sa Pilipinas ba, Sir Lester, ay open? Not yet. Accepted na? I think, sir, based on our, we have conducted this study along with Mom March. Um, I think it's still progressing, po. Progressing, so not yet. Oh, po. Okay, so, so see, especially po with the millennials, the gay millennials, they all experience discrimination, prejudice in the school setting. So okay. yun po. So antanong ngayon, antanong ngayon, which is which is more unethical, 
being part of the LGBTQ or the discrimination behavior? O, yun ang tanong ngayon. No? Ali, sige, kinat lang kita, madam, kasi po uh, sinasabi ko sa'yo na ang mga millennial students natin may kakaibang ugali. Why do I need to tell you that? Because as teachers, tayo po mag adjust We will adjust. Kung tayo ay pinalaki na dapat uh, pokokan ng pag-aaral, ngayon hindi. Ang mga estudyante gusto nila mabilis. Bakit? Kasi uh, ang, ang Google ay ano yan, si, Mr., ano yan, eh, si Mr. Dictionary na ang Google ngayon. Eh. You ask Google everything and Google will answer you. <laughs> Basta may internet ka. At baka nga mamaya habang nagtuturo ka, ginugugle yung sinasabi mo kung totoo. <laughs> Kaya... Uh, ang pagtuturo ngayon dapat ano ka, eh, facilitative ka na lang eh. Kasi meron matatalinang estudyante na bawat sabihin mo, ginugugil kung tama yung sinasabi mo. Gan ganyan ngayon ka, ka, ka bold When I bold, they ring yung mga talagang uh, ano, nagsasalita talaga mga estudyante natin ngayon. So that's one of the takeaways that we need to learn from, uh, from the video lessons. No? Ma'am uh, Joanne, sorry to cut you, meron ka pang sasabihin. Um, yes, sir. Ah, no problem po. Madami po kaming nag-gain from your <laughs> sharing. So, yun nga po. Um, millennials are really instant today. Uh, in my classes po, they prefer to watch videos rather than read uh, books, stories. But, of course, I usually handle literature subjects. So, I always encourage them pa din po to read. Kasi, di ba po, um, nababago siya kapag ina-adopt or nagiging movie, nagiging video clips. Okay. And okay. even... Combination. Pwedeng combination. Yes po, combination. Um, and last po, yung sa um, experimentation po nung sa genes. Pero ito po yung napan in relation to what I've watched, the videos that I've watched before na because of technology, a lot of scientists today are really experimenting within the organs of uh, the people nowadays. Parang they, they really want to discover a lot of things in line with the help of technology. Um, kagaya po nung na, nandun sa video na you can have the surrogate, the test tube baby, yeah. and then we have a lot of contraceptives. Wherein before, when I teach contemporary world, there are a lot of stages in line with population. That not just only technologically based, but it has something to do with the values of the people. Na they don't want to add up to the fertility rate, uh, regard, um, also the mortality rate. That's why other countries impose the one-child policy, the two-child policy. Aina. Yun po, and um, a lot more. So thank you so much po, for thank the... You. Thank you for that sharing, Ms. Uh, Dr. Joanne. Pero... That's why if you notice kanina, I, I mentioned a while back, the three H's, the, cognit, the, the head, the hands, and do not forget the heart. Kasi when you develop the heart, that is where the, the morality can be integrated, the ethics can be introduced. Nalimbawa, while we are advocating the use of technology, let us not forget to always remind them of the do's and don'ts of being responsible and accountable in using technology. No? Kasi hindi lahat ng maganda at makabago ay fully acceptable. Meron ding mga ano yan. If, if, if technology, uh, humans are not perfect. Technology is made by human beings. Therefore, technology is also not perfect. Tama po ba? That's my, that's my analogy to that. So therefore, since technology is not perfect, we, educators, have the responsibility to monitor the imperfections, to monitor the possible prob problems that may arise out of the use of the online learning. And we do not have any options right now, at this point in time, we have no other option but to really adapt to the technological changes and innovations. Actually, the reason why we are uh, facing difficulty on the use of technology right now, because 
I do not want to blame our education sector, such as CHED and DepEd. But in the first world countries, technology is not an issue. Technology has been utilized even before, even two decades ago. It's, it's a normal thing. Online learning is a normal thing to them. Of course, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, questioning our CHED and DepEd, but why is it that they were not able, they were not able to project? Why is it that they do not want to become international? They do not want to compete globally because if the education sector of the Philippines, sorry ah, baka makarating ko sa chat sa DepEd, mabaril ako. Ako yung taga DepEd din. <laughs> Because if they already conceptualized the, this online learning, even before, they, they should have invested in technology, in internet connection, and they should have trained the teachers on the use of varied approaches in learning, such as learning management system, the use of Zoom, Google Meet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are many platforms, but I'm sorry, the education sector of the Philippines failed kay taga DepEd ako ah. <laughs> they failed to forecast kasi naniniw naniniwala lang sila sa traditional method i have nothing against traditional method because that is the foundation of all education yung face to face learning pero sana nakikita ng ating education sector as the term implies educators sa atin dapat tayo dapat yung nangunguna sa pagtuturo, sa pagpipredict. Wala man tayong power si Madam Auring, but we should be benchmarking on, on the practices of the first world countries if we are really serious in making our educational system globally competitive. Kaya yun ang aking sentiments. No? Uh, kaya marami nakaka-experience ngayon sa Pilipinas, DepEd and CHED, ng problem sa online learning. Kasi kung yan ay noon pa, edi sana noon pa, sanay na tayong lahat. Sana noon pa yung mga sadyante natin, hindi na tayo nahihirapang mag, magturo, magbigay ng mga lessons, or mag-remind sa kanila. Nangyayari ngayon, dalawa functions natin. We are teaching them cognitively and we are monitoring them on the proper use of technology. Kasi some of them ay hindi proper ang paggamit ng technology. So, that's my personal uh, opinion about uh, technology and ethics. Na I hope uh, pwede nyo i-reflect later on. No? Um, Sir Ray, you are raising your hand before I proceed to the next video. Pasensya na kayo ha. Uh, napapasarap yung ating mga sharing or discussions. Okay lang ba? mag extend lang tayo ng konti. Dapat hanggang 12 lang. Pero mag extend lang ng konti. No? Uh, so okay lang, sir. Okay lang. Kayo so far? Okay. 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 Okay, lang. Would you like to say, raising your hand? I'd like to acknowledge you. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, here are some reflections um, I'd like to share with everyone after watching the video. Fact, everyone is flawed. And it is also a fact that everyone is imperfect. It is also a fact that we all have blind spots. Mm. History and the present tell this, uh, tell that these are all true. My question is, did technology make the unethical ethical? My answer is no. Should ethics be universal? My answer is yes. What, uh, what technology made and what technology is still doing is stretching our boundaries and tolerance on what is right and what is wrong. The element of shame is lessened and technology helped us hide shame. We become less embarrassed about the wrongdoings that we do every day and everyone has become opinionated and self-righteous. And that's the point where the dilemma starts. Thank you. All right, I think the, all your points are, 
are excellently executed no they are they're very good no and um, we agree on on I, i personally agree on your um, on your statements about on the summary of your statements about the video clip so so um, in 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 general I'd like to believe that we learned a lot from the short video clips that I presented. Tama po ba? And it's, a, it's high time, it's high time that during this 21st century and pandemic time uh, that we change our paradigm. Not, not drastically, uh, when I say change, let us uh, change our acceptance to, to what is going on, to, to the changes that are happening acceptance is very good and let us be uh, humble enough in accepting our limitations if we are limited by the use of technology then it's high time that we uh, no, the, uh, update ourselves that's ethical humility also and let us build bridges gusto ko build bridges let us uh, uh, build the bridges the bridge between the past and the current no Because if we build the, this bridge between the past and the current, we will not have any excess baggage. We can go further in the future um, perfectly if we, have, if we are able to build bridges. All right, so the final video, pasensya na kayo ha, kung marami ako na i-prepare for today. <laughs> Sana ano, hindi pa kayo nagugutom. Sorry, konti na lang po ito. Pagtsagaan nyo na lang po. The final video that I would like to share with you is this is the video naman from the philippines uh, a short video clips um, about ethics in the in the philippine modern society no and, and the content of the video is parang ano siya, uh, interviewing uh, students regarding their perspective about ethics um, in the modern society Very short na lang ito. At malapit na tayong matapos. Ayan. Kita niyo po. Yes, Doc. Yes, po. Play ko na po. Thank you. So hello guys, so from this video, we will be having a discussion and interview among NNOS Gen students with regards to ethics in the modern Philippine society. So dito din sa video na ito, ipapakita natin kung gaano na nga ba kalawak ang naging influence ng ethics sa bawat Pilipino. So here today, as I can tell, let's see how this video goes as we ask them a question with regards to ethics. So tara guys. Thank you. 
Vice is a man. Thank you. Yun nga guys, kung matapansin nyo kanina, nagtagay kami ng mga videos na kung saan ito ay nag-exemplify o nagpapakita ng forces ng ethics in the Philippine Modern Society. So, bakit nga ba mahalaga yung ethics? So, simple lang guys, kasi itong ethics na to is isa siyang backbone ng ating society na kung saan nag-act siya as a guiding force para dictate or para nagdiktahan yung individuals individual's right or wrong ng isang tao. So, yun guys, thank you for watching these videos and remember to be an Alright. Uh, thank you so much for watching and listening to the video presentation. And of course, before we further discuss the contents of the video, uh, help me answer basic quest this basic question. Um, what te why teaching ethics to our millennial or Generation Z students imperative or important? Why do you think it is important that this millennial or Generation Z students be taught with uh, ethics? Again, www.menti.com and use the code Yeah, and it is important now because it develops their effective skills, values integration, reflection, yeah, show humanity and values. Act with virtues, no? Values matter, maganda rin yun. Gusto ko rin yung, ano, yung uh, phrase na Teach them with morals. Very good. No? All right. Okay. Accept acceptance of culture for them to learn ethics. Okay. Teach the morals, all right. Okay. Okay. So, pwede na yan. May nine na na nagsagot. Pwede na. Yung iba siguro nagugutom na kaya, ano, hindi <laughs> na masagot. This is, uh, this is my last slide. Okay, may sumasagot pa. All right. This is my last slide that uh, we will uh, more or less, siguro mga one or two views lang views or opinion or sharing about uh, the, the video clips about the interview um, uh, conducted for students. Imagine nyo kanina, inumpisan ko, kayo muna ang tinanong ko about ethics, yung mga binanggit kayo na hindi naman din nalalayo sa mga video clips na pinresent at hindi rin nalalayo sa sagot ng mga estudyante na tinanong ngayon. So, Parang in general, more or less, the society, our society, is really aware of what ethics is and what uh, moral morals are, no? What the, the importance of morality. Siguro ang, ang kailangan lang natin is strengthen sa ngayon is the integration in our teaching. The integration. Kasi kitang-kita naman eh, from the video clips kanina, and then yung ngayon, and then sa mga sagot ninyo, sa mga sharing ninyo, I, I, very, I very much appreciate your, your sharing na talagang uh, ethics is very important 
that we need to adjust to the current situation and ethics is based on culture. And kung tayo ay nasa Pilipinas, syempre, kailangan din natin mag-adjust sa ethics ng Pilipinas kasi nasa sarili tayong country. Eh. And take note, kahit ang Pilipinas sa isang nation, sometimes each region has its own regional cultural differences din. Naniniwala ba kayo doon? May mga cultural uh, differences. Kahit nga sa isang region, meron pa yung mga tinatawag na municipality or city ano, practices na magkakaiba din. No? Na iba-iba yung, na iba-iba yung paniniwala nila. No? So, uh, may, I, may I hear at least one or two uh, comments from the from the video that uh, you watch video clips this time ang ang at ang, ang nagsalita mga estudyante naman kanina isang expert no isang speaker yes um miss masangkay good afternoon sir it's already afternoon uh, dr noki and to our <laughs> classmates um i allow me to be, make this very short uh, I, most of the students commented about values integration when it comes to um, uh, issues of uh, ethics, and I think that's um, in the in the in the practice uh, since uh, we are in the basic education. We are in the basic education. I think that's one of my uh, my flagship when I when I give technical assistance and when I do when I teach my my uh, my students reflection three. Uh, three things, reflection, effective skills, that's why we have the KSV, knowledge, skills, and values. And then we have values integration. We have the four core values in the in-depth ed, makajos, makatao, makalikasan, and makabansa. And those uh, things are very important as, as we teach. Uh, most of my, uh, uh, allow me to share this, most of my lessons, just that's one uh, basic thing and most important thing that I want to share to my students, um, how and uh, how will they use this uh, learning in order to develop themselves when it comes to developing their own their own values. That's why uh, my my sister who used to be with me when I teach senior high school students, my sister usually commented, Ate, ba't naging values subject na yung research mo? <laughs> but parang naging values subject na yun? Because at, at the end of the day, that's, I think, uh, uh, one uh, important thing that we want our students to learn. I think I have to agree. I have to agree with what you said, 300%. No? <laughs> na kahit anong subjects ay dapat merong values integration. No? Kasi alam nyo, uh, technology right now can already give our students a lot of information, voluminous information that they can read. No? Everything is available online already. But we need now, what we need now, while guiding them on their modules, on their online learning, we, they need guidance. Guidance on the how do you call this, on the, um, on the values integration and how will they live up no? on those values that you uh, teach them. No? Importante yun. Kasi sabi nga ni Madam March, even accreditation would look into values integration. That is very important. And we are ethical, we become ethical teachers if we ensure that we make them responsible, accountable to whatever actions that they make. Yung kanina mga sagsinagot sa interview, yung, yung uh, respeto, mapagmahal, etc., etc., those are good values. And those are very Filipino, Filipino values that must not be forgotten whenever we, 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 teach, our, we teach our students. That, that's good. That's a good sharing. Uh, Ma Marge, are you raising your hand? No, Doc. Well, basically, my point has been already uh, cited by Mom Gili and by you also. Uh, the importance or the relevance of value integration in all the lessons that we are teaching our students really matter. Um, basically, even whatever subjects we are teaching, that uh, we should always do that. 
okay, as educators, especially us, as educators in the basic education. All right. Especially that we are in the education field, uh, for those who are in the basic education, even in the higher education, I, we either make or break our students. And take note, uh, yung sinasabi nga ni Gat Gato Serizal, na sila ang pag-asa ng bayan. So, so paano, paano na ang bayan natin? Paano na ang future natin if we, have, if we have not developed them properly? Kung puro talino lang ang i-develop natin, paano na ang bayan natin? Kaya maraming leaders ngayon who do not have proper values. They're very good. They're excellent. Board top natures. But they do not have the heart. They do not display uh, respect with one another. Nakikita mo yan sa mga senators. Politicians. <laughs> Pag may mga senate hearing sila, sa congress, mga congress hearing. O huwag na tayo lumayo. Nako, I do not want to mention name. No? Yung values ng pagiging respectful uh, from one another. Baka mabaril ako ng mga Duterte dito. I have, I have nothing against Duterte. Pero I think uh, pag si Duterte ang nagsasalita, huwag mo natin, natin panoorin ng TV yung mga anak natin kung meron tayong mga anak. Because, you know, uh, uh, connecting the past, no? no connecting our past from, from, from the current generation, hindi pa rin dapat mawala yung magalang, yung respeto. And uh, para sa akin, personal opinion ko, of course, and hindi ako against Duterte. Ha? Actually, I like some of her actions, some of his plans. I like it. Ang hindi ko lang like, yung, ano, yung, uh, yung nagmumura <laughs> on national television na parang hindi makikitaan ng magandang, uh, magandang value. So, what is our role now? What is our role now? We, we as teachers should guide them. We as teachers should guide also the parents, especially now that the, te that the students are at home, that they should proper, kaya nga meron din na tawag ng parental guidance is advice. Diba? Meron, 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 namang, meron namang statement doon eh, na meron mga ano, uh, ang tawag doon? Yung, ang eksena ng ito ay may, ano, nakalimutan ko tuloy. <laughs> mga sexual, mga ganyan. Hindi na ang cop sa mga bata. Mga so, as teachers, hindi lang students ang, ang ating ginaguide, ang ating monitor, pati mga parents. Because our parents are para teachers. Sila yung nag ano, sila yung nag uh, sila yung nag uh, act as teachers ngayon sa bahay. So, importante 'yon. Now we develop our children, is our students right this time, immediately. Kasi napakabilis ng panahon. We, we, we never know, baka in the future yung mga hinawakan natin, maging future leaders, at least meron sila nakuwang mga good values sa atin, mga good ethics sa atin. Kaya ako ayoko na mag-memorize kayo ng mga Kantianism, Deontology. <laughs> those are very technical, pero I'd like to see the applicability of those values, of those ethical, ethical theories. Kasi yun, pwede ko kang bigyan ng copy, pwede yung basahin. Independent learning, kaya niyang basahin yun. But the sharing of what we did this morning, to me, is far more important than discussing no, the definition of utilitarianism, <laughs> the definition of etc. etc. No, I hope, I hope uh, nag-agree kayo sa akin. Uh, Miss, uh, at Sir Jojo Alvin, you're raising your hand before we end. Mukhang may iahabol ka. Sir Jojo? Uh, yes, sir. Sorry po. Sorry. I am back. I managed to charge my phone ng konting oras sa sasakyan po. So, medyo nakahabol kahit pahuli na. Nagka-battery ka. <laughs> Opo, kahit konti. Um, tungkol po dun sa huling question, um, medyo late ako ng pasok ulit. But, um, isi-share ko lang po yung sa akin, how I integrate values and ethics to my students since I teach all subject, uh, English subjects. So what I do to my kids po is that I integrate values and ethics in such a way that yung everyday use, for example, lagi kong tinuturo, sa, kasi yung mga bata ko po, um, we don't speak Tagalog during my time since I teach English, speaking English, right? So I always tell my kids, 
you have to always include please in your statement and thank you at the last part of your statement. For example, uh, usually mga bata po kasi, uh, I don't tend to generalize, pero um, from what I notice, ang mga bata pag nagpapaalam, for example, Sir, I go to toilet, CR, like that. Sir, I go to canteen, eat, something like that. So, lagi kong kinokorek yung mga bata ko na it should be like this. Sir, may I please go to the toilet? Sir, may I please go to the canteen? Thank you. So, from that um, examples or situations, I think I am able to inculcate values although my subject is English. So, simply lang po yung pag i-inculcate ko ng values pero in on my part alam ko na na-integrate ko yung values sa aking subject na English ko. Thank you po. Very good. Very good. Whatever subjects you are handling, whatever subjects you are teaching, please please kindly incorporate, integrate this what we call values, no? Upright values, no? Um kasi importante yan sa panahon ngayon. Diba sa akin, di ba nang hindi masyado matalino basta may proper values <clears throat> at street smart, yung tinatawag na street smart. Yes po. Kung sinabing street smart, yung kaya makibagay sa lahat ng klase ng tao, yun ang i-develop natin sa kanila. Numbers, honors, those are just awards. <clears throat> Pero yung awards na yan will not determine what kind of person they will be in the future. Napakadaming matatalino ngayon na walang proper values, no? I, I agree, sir. Uh, let us uh, strike uh, a good balance between quantity and quality. Quantity of what we are teaching them and quality of their personality. No, that is my challenge to all of us. We are all educators. Kung kayo ay nasa DepEd, yung sinabi nga ni Madam, isa sa mga uh, taglines ay makajos. Oh. Yun lang maka-jos over ano na yon. <laughs> Umbrella na yon ng lahat na yon ay dapat maganda na gagawin mo. Kasi pag naging maka ka ay talaga namang hindi ka gagawa ng hindi maganda. <laughs> All right. Oh, so I think meron na, meron kayo natutunan kahit kaunti sa ating sharing this uh, this day. And I hope I did not fail you. I did not uh, disappoint you with the kind of discussion that we have. Because I believe this is a doctorate degree program. Ayoko masyado maging technical. Ayoko more of sharing wisdom. Because by sharing, uh, we care with one another. And we, no one is an island. And no one has the monopoly of knowledge. By sharing our knowledge and wisdom, meron tayo mapupulot sa bawat isa. At pwede nating madala yun kung nasaan man tayo located. No? And I think that is the very purpose of graduate education. Hindi ako doon sa... Actually, I prepared a PowerPoint presentation pero uh, napansin nyo na hindi ko na siya binuksan kasi magiging boring ang aking discussion. <laughs> I hate boring discussions. Tingnan nyo naman yung overview ng aking discussion. O oh. oh, yan mga yan. Sorry. O oh, yan o. Oh. Ayan, no? kung babasahin ko isa-isa yan, eh, parang magiging boring naman yata. Siguro bigyan ko na lang kayo ng copy. No? Kasi ang discuss natin is actually real application of, of uh, what we call uh, eth uh, theories of eth uh, ethical theories. No? Ngayon, kung gusto nyo magkaroon ng copy nito, this is the technical aspect. Uh, pwede ko rin kayong padalhan ng copy. No? doon sa ating GC. Pero ang point ko naman, tayo ay nasa cyber cyber goji or cyber logical approach ang ginagamit ko, meaning to say the use of technology, cyber which which means technology, goji is a method of teaching. Nasa cyber goji na tayo, mga, mga ano mga dear colleagues, ang ethical theories napakadami po sa internet. Kaya nyo nang i-browse yan at kaya nyo nang mag, uh, mag yutagoji Alam nyo ba yutagoji H-E-U-A-H-E-U-Yuta. H-E-U-A-T-A-Yuta. Goji. Yutagoji. 
No? Ano ibig sabihin ng yuta? Independent. Learning. It's a form of teaching through independent learning. Kasi there are things uh, that, that you can read already by yourself. Remember, doctorate program kayo. Hindi kayo spoon-fed dapat. Uh, para sa akin, ang ini-spoon-fed lang ang mga elementary at saka mga pre-LM, pwedeng high school. Kaya nga, uh, finally, ako ay nalulungkot bilang nasa Department of Education ng Bulacan, nalulungkot ako na ang, ang self-learning module ay currently in-implement na wala naman tayong ibang option because that's the national, um, national policy. But self-learning module is only applicable to independent learners like you. Yung mga kaya na mag-aral mag-isa. No? Uh, ang mga teachers ngayon sa DepEd, I am sorry to say, ay hindi naman talaga nagtuturo, lalo na kung SLM ang ginagamit. Nakapagturo lamang ang mga teachers kung may online. No? Or kung may video lessons. Pero majority, in my case, dito sa Bulacan, puro SLM. So, i-deliver, i-kukunin lang yan, yung module ng parents, tapos bahala na sa bahay kung paano <laughs> sasagutan yung module. And the sad part of the story, kadalasan, yung mga magulang ang sumasagot. <laughs> yung mga magulang, yung mga tsahin, tsuhin, mga kapatid. So, ako yung nalulungkot, I have to be honest with you, na uh, nangyayari itong mga bagay na to kasi na, na magkakaroon, ako personally, nagkakaroon ng problema sa foundation. Basic education is the foundation of all, of all educational levels. Na dito dapat yung part na ini-strengthen natin. So I am not very sure. Opinion ko lang to ha. This is not applicable to all. Uh, I'm not very sure whether natututo talaga yung mga estudyante sa pamamagitan ng self-learning module. Lalo na yung pre-LM at saka LM. Uh, di ba din na yung high school, kahit pa paano, nasa teenagers na yan, teenager years na yan. So pwede mo nang bigyan ng instruction yan. At kailangan lang dyan ay talagang full monitoring kasi baka mamaya akala mo, nagmumo, akala mo ay nagmamodule sa cellphone or nag-online learning, yung bala nagmamobile legends. <laughs> so kailangan talaga ng constant monitoring. And it is our ethical responsibility and accountability to monitor. Kaya kung yung mga gumagawa ng online learning, pakigawa ang online kumustahan, online kumustahan sa mga parents, kung kumusta yung mga anak nila, yung mga problema na encounter nila. no? Because to me, that is our accountability and responsibility as public servants kung kayo ay nasa government. Kung nasa private naman kayo, yan din ay sinumpaan ninyong credo bilang teacher, kung kayo ay licensed teacher, part of creed yan. Kung kayo ay nasa private school, na Catholic school, I think the more that the values are to be integrated and must be practiced. No? Kasi hinahanap yan, totoo yung sinabi ni Madam, I am a PACOCOA accreditor whenever I visit uh, private schools or Catholic schools ay inahanap ko sa curriculum nila yung values integration to the point na nag interview ako ng mga estudyante and I, I'm, I'm asking them on how they were able to imbibe the values that are written in the, in the syllabi. So nag-ano ako, nag-interview ako ng mga estudyante, ng mga teachers. So values, in short, to make the long story short, ethical values or ethics is important and must be present in all the subject areas. Whatever topics you are discussing, values must be integrated to be ethical. So I hope I, was, I did not take um, your precious time today. Pasensya na po kayo na na-diet kayo ngayon. Mukhang pumayat kayo. Ang papayat nyo na tingnan ngayon na diet kayo. <laughs> Dahil lunch time na hindi pa kayo nagla-lunch. Pasensya na po kayo. But I am very happy that everyone uh, is actively participating, meaning to say I was able to engage you sa topic, ibig sabihin naging, ano, naging, uh, uh, naging uh, yung, yung, yung topic ay naging very interesting on your part kasi nag-participate kayo. So I appreciate your participation. Marami salamat po. Your inputs are very good. And sabi ko nga sa inyo, nasa PhD kayo, we are more of wisdom sharing 
more than the technical aspect of the topic. Alright? So, sana may natutunan kay kay Conte. Meron ba? Meron ba kayong natutunan kay Conte? Yes, sir. Yes, naman po. Yes, yes. Yes, yes po. Absolutely. Yes, po. Do. Yes, po. Much po. A lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doc. Na, na point na professor ninyo sa subject. <laughs> sabi ko, sabi ko kasi sa Ubat, ano lang, research and stat lang ako. Binigyan ako ng another subject. Eh. Kasi kung research and stat yan, ako po, uh, ano yan, maning-mani yan. Pero, since I am I am uh, I am an educator by profession and I am really an advocate of of values education ay talaga namang malapit din naman sa puso ko yung topic natin. Iniba ko lang yung strategy. No, iniba ko lang yung approach. Hindi very technical. So therefore this is our first uh, synchronous learning. Our next synchronous learning is uh, gusto ko sana matapos na yung tatlo. Kasi yung sa, at, sa schedule, dapat makatatlo tayo na synchronous. Sa natitirang dalawang synchronous learning, um, magkakaroon tayo ngayon ng uh, presentation on your part. As I mentioned during, I, during the previous meeting, I am asking you to review at least five research papers, articles about um, about ethics, any paper about ethics, research paper about ethics, summarize them, no? get the highlights. Alam niyo na pag sinabi kong get the highlights, in no less than 10 minutes, pwede kayo magkaroon ng presentation next time. Uh, pwede first batch and second batch. Kayo nang bahala mag-usap-usap kung sino ang first batch at saka kung sino second batch. You will be presenting, ang gusto kong ma-present ninyo is based on research kung ano yung sinasabi ng research about ethics. Halimbawa, kung may nakita kayong relationship between values and academic performance of the students, parang ganon. Maghahanap kayo ng mga ganong researches na ethics that is related to education. Tapos summarize nyo lang siya. Hindi nyo kailangan basahin lahat. Summarize nyo yung gist or findings or highlight ng bawat study you merge all of them together and then I'll give you mga 5 to 10 minutes to present in our next synchronous class classes. Kasi two more classes. So if you are 16, siguro 18, uh, 8 yung mauuna, tapos 8 yung pangalawang batch. Para yun yung hatian natin. Ako muna ngayon, ako yung facilitate ngayon. Next time, kayo naman ang facilitator at ako naman, ako naman na magbibigay ng mga comments sa presentation ninyo. No? Ganun ang gagawin natin. You are you have the freedom um in 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 your presentation, you may use PowerPoint, you may use you may use video or whatever, but whatever um a platform or kind of presentation will be accepted. Bahala kayo doon. No? Pero mahalaga ang presentation niyo will be based on research. Bakit? Para kung sakali man nang ipi-present ninyong topic Ay, ay related sa dissertation paper ninyo, at least meron na kayong five related literature na, na review na pwede nyo magamit sa dissertation writing ninyo in the future. Kaya ang gusto ko sa inyo, since PhD kayo, dapat ang ginagawa ninyo is article review or research review na makikita sa mga uh, down sa mga reliable uh, websites like Eb like Eb's co-host. So ipopost ko sa ating GC, please remind me, ipopost ko sa ating GC yung ating um, yung ating uh, Eb's co-host username and password. Meron na, alam ko si Ma-March meron na, no? Yung iba wala pa. Sa, pa. sa para sa wala pa, mabibigay ako ng user ID and password ng Eb's co-host. Para naman sa meron na, di gamitin nyo na kung anong meron kayo. Ano po? Tapos, uh, para naman doon sa, sa tawag dito, sa gusto pang magkaroon ng, ng iba pang uh, sources, you may, go to, uh, you may go to Google, kindly look at your uh, screen, and then you may type, DOAJ. Nabanggit ko na ba yan? Dati? Not yet. 
Not yet po. Yan, DOAJ Journals. Hanapin nyo yung DOAJ Journals na yan. Pag nakita nyo yung DO, Directory of Open Access Journals, ibig sabihin, hindi kailangan ng user ID and password dito. So you click that, Directory of Open Access Journals. So 2-in-1 na to, tinuturuan ko na kayo ng subject na, na, na uh, seminar on ethical theories. Tinuturuan ko pa kayo mag-research. 2-in-1. No? <laughs> so pag punta nyo rin sa page na to, hanapin nyo yung search, itong word na search, na icon na search, and then click articles. Click nyo lang articles na yan. Pag na-click yung articles, you type, for example, um, ethical values and uh, education. Educational performance, for example, or educational achievement. Example lang yan. Gusto mong malaman kung yung ethical values ba ay may kinalaman sa educational achievement ng mga estudyante. And then all fields. After that, you click search. Itong search icon na to, itong orange, kita niyo po ba? If you click that, hahanapan kayo ng DOAJ ng mga articles that are related to, to um, values and achievement. Ayan na o. Oh. Ayan. Determining the relationship between personal values. Ayan, may, may values dyan. Ethical development. Oh, ethical development is ethics din. Pwede niyo itong gamitin for educational leaders naman. Pwede yan. So ito, kung di niyo mabasa yan, huwag niyo pilitin kasi mukhang Arabic. <laughs> ito na lang. Uh, value in medical education. Pwede rin yan. Uh, so marami yan. Marami kayo makikita dyan. Pero lima lang ang hinahanap. Kung mamili na lang kayo ng paborito niyong topic or article. No? Tapos, aside from DOAJ, ang maganda doon sa uh, EBSCO, Uh, meron kayong mada-download na PDF full text. Ibig sabihin, yung buong paper pwede nyo ma-download. No? EBSCO. Kung ayaw nyo ng EBSCO, yung EBSMO. <laughs> Hindi, joke lang yun. <laughs> Pero EBSCO host ang inyong pupuntahan. <laughs> At yung password ay ipopost ko na lang sa GC after our class today. Ipopost ko siya right away para pag naghanap kayo ay may mga full text kayo makikita. So, Again, um, uh, let me know kung kailan kayo pwede sa next meeting ng Sunday ulit at doon tayo magmi-meet. No? Um, what about next Sunday? Not yet? Hindi pa ready. No? Okay, the, the following Sunday siguro. Kasi parang ang tingin ko doon hanggang kailan tayo? June? Hanggang June ano ba tayo? Yung klase natin. On June 6 po, Doc. June 6, Doc. Hanggang June 6 lang. So, kailangan natin magmadali. Wait lang, ha? June 6. Uh, so, May 3. Today is May 16. Meron ba tayong May 23, May 30, and June 6. So, um, ano gusto nyo? Magklase tayo ng May 23. Uh, kayo mamili ng oras. At saka May 30. Para June 6, magkukompute na ako ng grades. Okay, yun na yung siguro. Kasi last day na June 6, para makapag-submit na ako ng grades. Tapos, doon sa LMS, ay, ano, uh, do not forget to include your name in the LMS. Sir Ray, kindly communicate with them para makapasok kayo sa LMS. Ma Marge, di ba may code na akong binigay para makapasok kayo sa LMS? Yes, Doc. Yes, Doc. Uh -oh. I'm already enrolled, by the way. Good, no? Ayun. Okay, very good. Ma Marge, I'd like to uh, I'd like to ask for your assistance. Kindly check in the LMS whether all of you are there already, no? Kasi doon ako mag-encode ng grade. Uh, uh, doc, I don't think I have an access if I could check the students list because I am on the student. Uh, okay, sige. So ako lang pala makaka-access. Akala ko meron, akala ko makikita niyo rin kung sino mga classmates niyo. Oh, sige, ako na lang. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. O di sige, I'll check na lang kung, kung kompleto na kayo. Kasi ayoko namang may ma-miss. Kasi pag hindi kayo nakapasok doon, wala yung pangalan nyo, wala akong may bibigay na grade. Kasi I will be starting uh, grading you starting next week uh, during your presentation. Uh, 
hindi ako nagsi-check ng attendance kasi nga uh, pandemic ngayon, yun lang ang magiging basis ng grade ninyo on how you synthesize the five articles related to ethics and, and education and uh, your oral presentation. So dalawa ang gagawin ninyo, oral presentation and written submission. Kung ano yung inorally pinresent ninyo, isasubmit nyo rin siya sa akin. Siguro para maging guided kayo, um, for each article, I am allowing you to, ha to have a summary, one page only, one page only, double, double space, times New Roman, 12 font size for every article. Summary lang po. No? Kasi pwede mo namang expound yun during your presentation eh. So kung meron kayong five articles na re-reviewin, you will be submitting me five pages ng nasa topmost ay article, name of the article, author, and your summary. Hindi po yung abstract ha, kasi yung abstract summary ng author yun. Gusto ko summary ninyo. <laughs> kasi baka may kopya niyo. <laughs> Sir question. question. Sir question. Will all those five articles be presented orally? Lahat po ba yon ipi present namin? Or we'll just have to choose one only? Summary po ng lahat. Ng lahat, okay. In uh, in ten minutes, sir. In ten minutes. Ten minutes. Kasi ano yun eh? Uh, Doon ko makita yung paano kayo mag-sentence. Kasi kaya mayroong dalawang articles na parehas naman na sinasabi din. You may take uh, one information but referring to two authors. That's how you synthesize kasi eh. Tapos pwede mo rin, when you synthesize, either you present the collaborative, the collaborating findings, ibig sabihin, corroborating findings, yung nagkakapare-parehas, and you may present contradicting findings or another idea based on another okay. author. That's how yes. Kaya yung portugal na lima para makita nyo yung similarities and differences ng write-up nila. Okay. No? Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No? So, meron pa ba tayong katanungan regarding my requirement? Ang submission will be on June uh, 6. Kasi June 6 ang last day. Pero ang presentation ay dalawang araw. Uh, May, May 16 and May 30. Pero kung sasabihin niyo sa akin na, sir, baka pwedeng isang araw lang yun, kakayanin na namin. Pwede rin naman. You, you, you can suggest kung gusto niyo uh, lahat na kayo isang araw o dalawang araw at hati kayo. Hati-hati kayo. Sir kasi, sir, kasi ang May 16 po ngayon na. I'm sorry. O nga, May 23 and May 20. May 23 and May 30. Sorry, typographical error. <laughs> Ilang po? Uh, so, ang sa pwede naman na, halimbawa, May 30, isahan na lang lahat na yun. Or kung gusto nyo, kalahate, May 23 and May 30. Yes, Ms. Sir, hello. Yes, sir. Permission to speak po. Sir, kasi we also have a class. Specifically, ako po, meron akong seminar in dissertation writing. And then, uh, it was scheduled this coming uh, uh, Sunday. So, pero I have other classmates who are requesting that uh, it should be moved on May 30. So, okay lang siguro, sir, kung dalawang hahatiin na natin ng May 23 and May 30 para kung sakali na hindi po ako maka-attend ng May 23 so I still have this chance to present my oral presentation sa May 30. Okay lang po ba yun? Yeah, ako ang mag-a-adjust. Halimbawa, makakasin okay. sa ibang professor ay hapon, umaga ako. Mm -hmm. Makakasin yeah, okay. ng professor ay umaga, hapon ako. Kung makakasin sa ibang professor ay maghapon, gabi ako. Okay, sir. Kasi pinag-uusapan pa lang po namin. Wala pa rin kaming final, ano, final schedule po. Sige, let me... Uh, paano po kaya? I will just inform you po. You just inform me through GC sa availability nyo sa, sa, sa 16 kung available kayo. Kung hindi naman, I'm sorry, sa 23 rather. Sa, sa 23. Kung hindi naman, 
let me know and I'm flexible. No? Kaya nga nasa flexible learning tayo eh. Gusto niyo gabi, pwede tayo mag-class eh. Kaya lang, kaya lang sana, sana ano pa ako nun, fresh pa ako nun kung gabi eh. <laughs> baka ano na, baka, <laughs> baka, baka ano na, bilas sana. <laughs> Oh, sige. So just let me know your schedule and I will adjust. I am I, I'm willing to adjust. No? So meron pa po ba? Uh, any more final question or final concern? Doc, as regard to the submission of written uh, written articles, ano po? Uh, where, where are we going to submit po? Are you going to uh, give us a prompt in the LMS or are we just going to send it to you via mail? Um, I'll check the LMS. I think the LMS has the capability for submission, no? individual submission. So, pwede na doon. Tapos, at the same time, uh, para meron akong summary, uh, bigyan nyo ako ng, I will, I will task siguro, if it's not too much, from Sir Lexter to uh, collate, collect and collate all the submitted um, summary. So five pages each. Kung kayo ay, ay 15, five times 15, ikokolate ni Sir Lexter yung 75 pages. Sir po, sir po no prob, sir. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Sir Lex Lester. Napakabilis ang sagot niya. O, sige, so uh, again, dalawang submission. Isa sa LMS, submit nyo rin individually. And then I would like to to have a copy of the summary. Yung sa LMS, individual yon, Individual submission. No? Para pag-open ko ng LMS, hindi ko na i-open yung sinabit ninyo, grade na lang ang i-input ko. Kasi sa GC, doon yung isasubmit yung summary. Doon submit ni Dr. Lester yung summary ng lahat. At uh, babasahin ko, saka ako doon ako magbe-base ng, ano, ng uh, rating. No? Ah, sige. Uh, uh, criteria for grading during the presentation. Three C's lang po ang hahanapin ko para alam nyo kung paano ko kayo gigradean. Three C's. Ano yung three C's? Content. Siyempre yung content ang hahanapin ko. No? Clarity ng presentation. And of course, creativity of uh, in presenting your, your, ano, your uh, output. Creativity in your presentation. So when I say creativity, alam, alam nyo na yun. Bahala na kayo doon. No? So yun lang, three C's. Ang aking uh, basis ng, present, ng, ano, ng grading. No? So dalawa, 50% will be coming from the oral presentation. 50% will be coming from the written output. So 50-50. Oh, parang ano lang, no? parang depeda, no? Written output and performance task. <laughs> Oo, siyempre, ganun din. Na-apply sa grad school. Pero iba naman sa atin, ano? Doc, Ma'am Precious is asking in our chat box, what is yes. the font size daw po? 12 po. Times New Roman, 12 double space. Thank you po. Oo. Gusto nyo ba single space para marami kayo may sulat? What do you prefer? Double, sir. <laughs> Double. <laughs> Para puno ka agad. <laughs> and please do not forget to, to write your references at the bottom of every page. At the bottom of every page. No? Reference. So, masyado ko na kayong ginupo. Um... Uh, marami salamat sa inyong lahat, sa inyong time, and I hope to learn something from our sharing, uh, sharing of uh, knowledge and wisdom. We learn from one, from one another, even myself, even if I am your professor, I am also learning from you. So learning is not only one way, it's always um, two-way learning. No? Uh, no one has the monopoly of knowledge, even me, I am learning from you also. So thank you so much. And hope to see you again next time. And I will be waiting for your updates as regards to the schedule that you would like, uh, the schedule that you would like to propose.
no for our next meeting. Ayan na, kayo ang gumagawa ng schedule ay hindi ako baliktad yan. <laughs> Sige, so kung wala ng tanong, uh, goodbye everyone and thank you so much for your kind listening. Always keep safe at kayo ba ay nag-groofy na, nag ano na, nag-picture na? Oh, wala kayong ano, wala kayong proof kay Dean na kayo ay nagklase ngayon. <laughs> Oh, yeah. di, di kayo nag-picture? Sino ba ang taga-picture sa inyo? Si Ma'am Dr. Gail, Gaily, ikaw ba ang taga-picture? Ma Marge. Ma Margie. Oh, Ma Marge. Yes po, yes po. Sir, I'm using a phone. You're using I a can, phone? Okay. I can take a picture. Ipo, kindly turn on your camera if you Congrats could. Congrats po, Ma'am Sir Joshua, kahit uh, one minute lang para po makita tayong lahat. Pasensya na po kayo sa itsura natin dahil uh, medyo ano lang, medyo pangit lang. <laughs> uh, uh, si Ma'am Michelle, ma'am, pa-open pa ng camera. Ma Sorry po, my camera don't want to turn on. I don't know why. Sige, next time ka na lang, Ma'am Michelle. Ma yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Kim, Ma'am Kim. Ayan, ayan. Dinakita na naka-pink ka. Ayan. Ma'am Rona. Mamrona, ikaw. Ayan. Pakipost sa mga wall ninyo ha. At itong friend nyo ako, pakitag na lang ako. Smile. One more po. Smile. Ma March dapat ayos ang kuha ko dyan ha. Opo, smile sir. Ayan, sige po. I-post ko po, Doc, sa GC okay. natin kasi hindi nyo naman ako ina-accept. Ay, teka lang. <laughs> Sorry. Marami akong friend request. Baka na ano ko lang. <laughs> Sir Jamin, friend ko na yan. Sir Ray. Sige, accept kita. Hahanapin ko pa nga. <laughs> Sorry. Medyo nag-flood. Medyo nag-flood lang ang akin. <laughs> okay lang po. Okay lang po. Thank you po. Busy po sa DepEd. Pasensya na po. <laughs> okay lang po. No worries. Joke oh, lang yun. So, uh, patag na lang ako and um, uh, see you again next time. Willing akong may post si mukha ko sa inyong mga walls. Hindi ko kayo kakaso ng Data Privacy Act. Pwede. I am allowing you. Bye-bye <laughs> everyone and have a good lunch. Bye po. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much po. Thank you po, sir. Bye po. Thank you po. Bye-bye po. Have us. Keep safe everyone.